Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so good to see you here. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. See all those smiley faces. Everybody's looking good. Kicking off the week. It is a Monday. Mondays can always go in either direction. They can be crazy and nutty as you get back into the swing of things, or they could be quite creative and terrific. And if you're off on Mondays, it could be really special. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We appreciate you guys being with us uh, for over 430 episodes we've done. Wow, that's a lot of talking. It's a lot of entertainment. It's a lot of inspiring conversations, light, love, levity, lovity, and all the other cool things that we do here live. That's right. This whole thing is live, and it's been live every single day. Just about seven days a week, taking a day here and there for family events, for special events, or if my work in television and radio calls me away. But generally, we've been here through thick and thin, through all the holidays, all the different seasons, through the pandemic, all of it, uh, to entertain, inform, educate, inspire, and have a good time with all of you. Welcome to our show. If this is your first time, You'll have a good time with us. That's what we always do. This is Pattern After the Old School Variety Talk Shows. Johnny Carson, Dick Cavett, Mark Griffin, Mike Douglas, Dick Clark, Steve Allen. Uh, and then we blend it in with a modern vibe of today with lots of lovity, a word that slipped out of my mouth last summer and has stuck with this show because the viewers call themselves the Lovities. They're part of our Lovity squad and we welcome everybody. And they watch from all around the world and we always have a good time. Think of it as a talk show where we have great guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, theater, which is the same as stage usually, <laughs> culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, and everything in between. Every show is something different. Every show is quite unique. And uh, we've come a long way on this show, truly, when I turn these lights on, these TV lights here in our home studio and uh, during the beginning of the pandemic said, hey, I wanna entertain, I wanna inform, I wanna bring people together with our show. And uh, you guys who follow along all the time from all around the world, thank you so much. And if you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you. Hello to all the lovities who are watching around the world. We welcome everybody that's watching. We invite and welcome you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. It's the channel you're watching right now. You see that red button that says subscribe, Click on that, and then also the little bell icon. Click on that as well, so that way there you never miss any alerts for upcoming episodes of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series and our famous and surprise pop-up shows we do as well. So there's always something cool going on, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with everybody as well. While you're on that YouTube channel, we would love it if you give this episode and all the episodes you enjoy a thumbs up like. You'll see a little arrow there, thumbs up, click like on the YouTube channel for this episode and all the rest. We would really, really appreciate that. And we thank you so much to those of you who do that. Today on the show, we do welcome actress, voice artist, Kathy Searle. She is here. We were having a great conversation. We were talking about childhood. We were talking about states. We were talking about Halloween. We were talking about everything. <laughs> and that was just the pre-show. And uh, she's going to join us in just a second, live from New York City. First, let's check in with some of our loveties. Hello, all loveties and my king. I hope you have a great time tonight. Watching from Sweden, Jane, one of our loveties. Good to have you, Jane, as always. I'm scary tired, so I don't think I'm going to manage to stay awake. So it might have to be the archive later. Welcome to Kathy. I know it's amazing how you stay up so late, so late. But well, we are so happy to have you here. And there you are. Welcome, Kathy. Hope you all have a great time in tonight's show with you. We always do. And with everybody. Alessandra in North Carolina says, hi, everyone. I missed you all. Big, lovely hug to my family. Welcome, Alessandra in North Carolina. Sherry Larson in Kansas, USA. Hello, everyone. Merlin is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Also welcome, Kathy, to Lovity Hall. Kathy knows all about Lovity, and she's really into it. She's really, really into it. Uh, Kathy Short is with us, another Kathy. And uh, hello, Jim and Lovities. She's in, of course, Cleveland, Ohio. She's here all the time. So nice to see everyone here tonight. You as well, Kathy in Cleveland and in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Jim and Lovity friends. Hope everyone is having a great day. Good to see you as well. 
Mary Bishop is here. Hello, Jim and lovely friends. Good to see you, Mary Bishop. We welcome you to the show as well and everybody who's watching live and those who watch later in the archives. Very excited to welcome to our show, Kathy Searle. She is really amazing. She's a very talented actress. She's had an opportunity to be a part of lots of great film, stage, commercials, and, uh, and lots, lots more. As a matter of fact, let me show you her commercial reel now, and then we'll have her come on. And you may recognize her in some of these commercials. Oh, I see them now. Oh, they're gorgeous. How much for the set? The jewels aren't for sale, ma'am. Oh. The jewels aren't for sale, ma'am. Seriously, name your price. <laughs> they're not for sale. I'm not trying to haggle with you. Just shoot me a number. Walk on. They're mine. Do you get wrap? The I now think I can buy the crown jewels because I'm feeling richer effect. When I brush, I like to do a really mediocre job. If I don't see it, it's not there. Done. No one really wants plaque left on their teeth. Oh, Bonnie, about the... Oh, the email, yeah, I got it. No, about... The stapler. I haven't seen it, but I would check in the mail. No, 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 about the conference. I've decided... That I'm going? That's great. Thank you, sir. I Actually, appreciate... Actually, Jill's going. I'm sorry, Bonnie. Yeah. It's just that... Jill is taller. No, she... Knows her way around Cleveland. No, she... Can drive a stick? I can learn. Jill doesn't finish other people. Sandwiches. I can't believe you told him. Embassy Suites Hotels. There's chocolate, and then there's this. Warm delights from Betty Crocker. So rich, so warm, it could make you melt. It's chocolate to the warmth degree. Hi, sweetie. Can you get us the Sirius Satellite Radio? The Sportster 4 from Radio Shack. It's really a great deal for 100% commercial-free music and our favorite sports 24-7. Sirius has the NBA and the NFL. Every game, every hit, every teeth-rattling, bone-jarring, pad popping hit! <laughs> ring, ring. Progresso. I look great in my wedding dress with the help of your amazing light soups. You know they're the only ones endorsed by Weight Watchers. They taste so good. Now we're adding even bigger pieces of white meat chicken. Oh, so when's the big day? Oh, we got married years ago. But the point is, I fit it. <laughs> Are you wearing it right now? Yes. Well, good for you. Check it. Raise or no raise, three count them three adorable spring ensembles for my girls. All for 30 bucks. Ooh, the Chinese food's still good, honey. Okay, we got this quarter's numbers in, and your performance has been very promising. Morning grogginess is way down, as is stiffness. And we have seen strong gains in both drooling and dreaming, but we have another big week ahead of us. Yes, Saturday is our anniversary, so... So let's not drop the ball. We don't want a repeat of last year. You'll never be disappointed by a mattress that fits you and the way you sleep. Backed by a 25-year limited warranty from Ikea. So we've got the three shows, and then we have the signing at the summer book fair. Then we've got the two meetings after that. America runs on Duncan. Unless the glasses can perform miracles, don't pay more than you have to. Honey. Let's get down there. Wait, wait. There's probably only eight or ten million. Let's wait for more. But come on, that's a lot of... Yeah. You know, right now you can get 20% back in rewards on over a thousand supplies, right? That'll be all. Staples, that was easy. Hi. You know, if we have that FedEx office printer presentation, they could have shipped it too. It's it ourselves a hassle. I'm not too sure about this. I'm yawning. And... 
I see your point. Yeah, we understand. You need a partner who delivers convenience. Shop the big coal sale. But of course. Me too. Tis the season. Barbie Glamour Jet for Lucy for being good. Use your Coles charge. Saves big automatically. No ifs, ands, or buts. Keurig Coffee Brewer. For my mom, for everything. Coles cash back. Ten for every fifty I spent. La 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 la. La la. La la. <laughs> Okay, what's with the phone? You had that out all night. Oh, it's not just a phone. It takes photos with this little camera, and it also records little video clips. A Verizon phone. Thanks, honey. There's more. Oh, no way, a digital camera. <laughs> There's more. A music player. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, a GPS with turn-by-turn -turn directions. There's more. Verizon Wireless has the gifts that give more. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I love the way you were reacting to them. You were like, you, you were almost mouthing the words to some of them, and you're like, oh my god, I forgot about that one. And wow, I did. <laughs> I have to tell, and like half of the people are all famous in those commercials, and yes. I've worked with them numerous times in the commercial where I'm pregnant, and then my husband becomes pregnant. That is the brilliant Steve yeah. Duncan, who's on uh, Billions and on Handmaid's Tale, yeah. and Adrian <laughs> Martin. Who screams money? He and I did a Super Bowl spot this year with Drake and Paul Rudd, which was That's really nice. fun. Yeah, but this, oh my God, that was like memory lane. That was down memory lane. <laughs> I also like that uh, when our theme song to the Gym Master Show Live was happening, you were bebopping to it, huh? Da, da, na, da, na, 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 da, na, na, I know. I feel like we should come up with like a you know a little like theme improv song right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> our buddy's to. watching too, Ryan Duncan. Hey, Hi, Ryan. Buddy. Hi, Ryan. Hi, my friends. Kathy, you need a collage of your different hairstyles and colors. I may have just purchased another wig today. I am a lady who loves wigs. Here's why I'm a character actor and I look different in everything. Um, and thank you, Ryan, for the intro, by the way, to Mr. Masters. I was very happy. Um, Ryan, we but, had a yeah. wonderful time with Ryan. He's awesome, isn't he? Oh, he's brilliant. Ryan and I have worked on numerous projects together and um, he is one of those that, yeah. that makes me break and laugh and I break yes. together. What I love is he has a dry sense of humor, which I like. I have a dry sense of humor, quick wit, and you obviously do too. And you no, can see that in all. those commercials. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in those commercials. <laughs> oh my God, it did. It took me down memory lane. That was amazing. Is it an Irish thing? <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. so, my dad so would you... say it's a British thing. <laughs> I told you they would notice the background. See, you're a lovety now, and you've got, the heart, you've got the hearts of lovety. Uh, Merlin Thank in you. Canada and Ontario says, love your background. Thank you. Yes, they're available online. They're very nice. They light up, too, which I love. <laughs> There's, in I my love apartment, it. it's like Disney. So, so when... Uh, quotes and things. So they light up. And their hearts. So when they light up, does Neil Diamond start singing "Turn on the Heart Light"? Yes, he does. Actually, <laughs> turn on the heart light. Everybody, turn welcome on. Neil Diamond. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a special surprise guest. Just I'm hanging out. I'm in, I'm in a studio apartment, so he's in my <laughs> very small kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> is he making anything? <laughs> yes, he is. Easy uh, mac and cheese. The three minutes that you pop in the microwave with a bunt cake. <laughs> Yes. We were just talking Nothing about bunt cakes. Bunt cakes. The audience wouldn't believe if we were talking about bunt cakes before we went live on the air. And I said, gee, whatever happened to them? You said, ah, Jim, there is a place where they Nothing exist. Bunt cakes. And I think you can order them online. Um, they're based out in uh, North Carolina. And let me tell you, those red velvet bunt cakes are like little pieces of heaven. I have a sweet you've, too. You've had, you've had uh, some tastings? Yeah. I mean, I shot a movie there and it was during COVID. 
so we would have the food delivered and all of a sudden I was like um could I get like does everybody was like oh let's have drinks and I was like no I don't want to drink give me the bunt cakes now take the bunt cakes the red velvet bunt cakes <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's so awesome to have you on the show and we really Thanks. kicked it off with uh the nice commercial reel there of all the incredible work and that just really scratches the surface of some of the cool things and projects you have an opportunity to work on how'd you get started in all of this what was uh for you you know some of those early sources of inspiration growing up and how did you know you wanted to get into all of this acting uh, and mean, performing and entertaining? My, my mom and dad would tell you it was out of the womb and they probably were like, uh Oh, um, but I begged them and they were very like, no, we don't want you to feel rejection and things like that. So there was an open call for a movie that was untitled at that point. Um, and I said, will you please take me to this open call? And I did. And I went in and they described a scenario about a bunny. And I thought it was funny. So I made the scene very funny. And when I walked out, the casting director said, she's hilarious. This movie is a drama. It's called Fatal Attraction. I thought the bunny in the pot was hilarious. I didn't yeah. think that something terrible was gonna happen to the bunny. So I made it a comedic scene. Um, I wonder why I didn't book Fatal Attraction. <laughs> especially with that look you're giving us right now those eyes yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> comedy eyes yeah That's, uh also a touch of joan rivers in the mix you were telling me tell us about that you know what this musical was incredible it was based on um johnny carson's lawyer had written a book about Johnny and yes. Johnny and Joan. Yes. And it was phenomenal. And to workshop that and play Joan Rivers, I mean, I dyed my hair platinum blonde. I jumped into all of her stand up. And I actually, I purchased a sweater that she used to uh, wear when she would write jokes. And I just embodied Joan and it was heaven. It was the one of the best projects. I'm so bummed that it didn't move forward, but what, what a role, what a woman to just thrust. What did you learn about her through that process? First of all, Joan was stunning and just so, but she, you know, she didn't believe it. It's, I, I love women like Amy Schumer because that's her act is yeah. that, you know, oh, I'm not attractive, et cetera. That's just a bit. But Joan, that was her bit, but she, she believed it. She believed She believed she wasn't, right? Uh, yeah. And she was, to me, stunning. I mean, really, when you look back on her early stand-up, and she was just a ballsy broad. She really, but what I loved about her is how much she loved her husband. You know, Edgar, she- Edgar, Edgar, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. loved him so much right up until the very end. Um, and- And that yeah. did a number on her, yeah. It did, yeah. it did. And, but she was loyal. She was fiercely loyal, and that was something that I, has stayed with me because that's the type of person I am as well. Um, but I love, oh God. Did you meet Melissa? Have you had the opportunity to meet Melissa? I didn't. I didn't. I would love to. If it was moving forward, I would have gotten a chance. But yeah, um, yeah, 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 it was, you know, someday, someday. I feel so, like I'd love to play her again. Are you able to do, a, can you do a little of her now, her voice? Oh God. I can don't, we talk? Um, can we talk? Can we talk? You know. But I gotta, I gotta warm up. <laughs> I wish I, you know, listen, I could, I could do a little Joan, but you know, uh, we'll do, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. That sounds like a little Streisand too, mm -hmm. didn't it? Uh, listen, I told you I was born in the wrong era because <laughs> now I have the face for radio. Um, but you know, yeah. these women, oh my God, these women are stunning in film and TV and you know, I'm the, the sidekick. But you back look fantastic. The day, what are you talking about? <laughs> thank you. Um, back in the tell me more. Back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I didn't quite hear that, Jim. Can you repeat? <laughs> Sorry, just keep um telling me. Um, no, but I, I definitely have a vintage face. A vintage so, face. How do you now how do you define a vintage face for those watching who are not sure what that well, means? Well, you know, Clara and <laughs> like a, no real. 
you know, I, it's a, you know, it's even though I, I will never deny I've had a little Botox. I mean, come on. Would, I, I mean, would you be somebody I would see in the, the produce aisle at the supermarket or that look, you know? <laughs> I'm pushing sure. the carriage with the two babies in it, crying and screaming because you're not sure. buying them cookies. <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably. No, actually, I'm buying the cookies, but I'm eating them myself. Um, no, but my <laughs> my face shape, etc. Um, oh, and I love that you noticed my nails, Merlin. Thank you. Let's see that? Yeah, let's. I love a good. I love nail art. I just got them done in honor of the Gym Masters show. See, I want some bright, that's, fun that's colors. Just, that's some real lovey, huh? It is a little light, so little lovey. When, when did when did the uh, family and others realize that you also had this quick wit as well that you could really roll with it i mean you and i were bouncing off each other before we went live on the air it was so like effortless and automatic and those are some of my favorite moments and conversations when you're both it's like a tennis match and you're, and you're after you're done you're both like wow that was awesome you even finish each other's sentences and it feels great Not sandwiches like in the commercial um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I my mom and dad were my dad unfortunately passed 12 years ago, but his comedy, he was one of those one liners that I oh, love. Yeah, yeah. Um and then my mom is me at 76. I mean, she uh, she's going to hate me for admitting her age. Um she's just a hoot. Like everybody in my family, I grew up and they and I loved my mom and dad said like if this is really what you want to do, learn from the best. So I sat down yeah. with the Steve Martin records, SCTV, the not ready for primetime players. That's where I really was trained. I mean, to this day, I think Chevy Chase taught me how to do a Pratt ball. Now at 42, though, I'm like, oh, I have a chiropractor <laughs> on speed dial. As <laughs> ball Doc, and oh, like, Doc, is your chiropractor, Dr. Vinny Boombots? <laughs> <laughs> no, his cousin. I was cousin. Sorry, bag of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> his cousin from Bergen County. <laughs> that, where did you grow up? I grew up in New Rochelle. And, and, and have and have you grown up? <laughs> no, so, no. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Um. Never. New Rochelle. Ooh. Yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. Howdy Doody. Carl Reiner. Yes, we've had there, Alan. There's Mankin. something in the water there in New Rochelle, isn't there? Thank you. Yeah, some people comedy would say, and yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. I go back all the time too because it's 30 minutes out of the city and it's great. I live in a studio apartment, same apartment. I'm now that New York character. I have lived in the same apartment for 21 years. Really? Wow. Half my life I've lived in 375 square feet. So anytime people are like, "My apartment's small," I'm like, "Welcome to my little closet." And and that's uh, seven thousand dollars a month for the three hundred seventy five square feet. <laughs> yes. No, I, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky with my my Manhattan rent. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say on the air. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Very. She's very happy. She's very pleased. She loves the heat yeah. and hot water. <laughs> I, when we have it, sure. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's great. We always have hot water. Yeah. So who are the people that, uh, obviously you mentioned Joan Rivers too. Who are the, some of the, Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, Phyllis Diller, all of these. Carol Burnett, Mary Tyler oh, yeah. Moore. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was, and again, that was a show that I sat in front of and just watched Gilda Radner, all of the, Bill Murray, a lot of these comics that I was just in awe of, but really. Jane Curtin was the best, still is the best. Uh, Very let me dry, you, deadpan, yeah. If we could do a reboot of Kate and Allie, can would we you, make- Would you be Kate or Allie? Everybody asked that and I have no idea. I would play either because I loved those women. That show was so ahead of its time. Yeah, and yeah. I love, you know, 80s TV though, I'm hooked on. I created an off-Broadway show with other actors called The Awesome 80s Prom. So anything 80s, I'm obsessed with. I really am. It's a problem. Alessandra in North Carolina asks, who's your favorite comic? Ooh, okay. I do love Amy Schumer because, you know, she's a gal that I, when I was doing stand up, she was much further along than I was and she was just so inspiring. Um, I will. You ever I will see Sebastian Maniscalco. Do you ever see him? Love. love. Yeah. He talks about all these crazy Seinfeld. things in life. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love Seinfeld. I really, you know, he's, and he's incredible live. Um, I would say I love Jim Gaffigan, you know, if we're talking of like the newer, not newer, but like younger comics, but Steve Martin will always be my favorite. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, to this day, he is just like, he's sort of my comic God. And Martin Short, they are like the the men that I'm sort of like, oh. Who do you don't, who do you not like? <laughs> no, you can skip that. Let me open my scroll. No, I've I'm got a lot. <laughs> um, you know what's funny? I'll uh, make a list, Jim, and fax it to you. <laughs> um, I am. I'm going to fax it right now. Um, <laughs> it's so hard because it's comedy is subjective, and I never- I never want to diss other comics because, you know, listen, some have their style where they kind of bash other people. I like the round table comedy. I like it to feel easy storytelling. Yes. Um, but have I have you ever done stand up? I have. Yeah. You have done stand up. And I miss it. It's it's really weird during the pandemic. I thought, should I get back into stand up? And then I thought, am I crazy? Um, because it is. Were you able to answer any of those questions? <laughs> no. No, I still, spent, the jury's spent, still out on both? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I do miss it, but the hustle, the hustle is hard. Yeah. I would get invited on people's shows, and I loved that, but a lot of them are out in L.A. And so, you know. Have you ever okay. dealt with any, uh, you know, jokesters in the audience? Um, oh, are you kidding me? Of course. And doing. And I um, bet you set them straight without them even realizing that you did. Yes. That's the best way to do it. Well, because here's the thing. I also, you know, we're in a time where people are talking about, you know, harassment and whatnot. Yes. I get this question a lot. Did it happen to you? And I said, well, yes and no, Um, of course. But then I would shut it down. I would just immediately throw a joke back at them. So they would sort of go, oh, yeah, I can't get away with that with her. Um, and so same thing with like hecklers in the audience, yeah, I would yeah. just bring the attention to them, but in a positive way. Cause I wouldn't want to lose the audience. Right. So I would have fun with them and I would play and it would be, you know, witty banter back and forth. But then they realize, oh wait, stand up isn't that easy. Cause I would oh, sometimes yeah. invite people on stage. <laughs> Would you like to come up here and do this, sir? I would say, (laughs) you are hilarious. Come up on stage. No, I'm not kidding. And I would give them the mic and it would be a whole thing. I loved it. It was was a blast for me because you really do get to see people like, oh, this woman is really calling me out. Just so I can make sure I heard it. Did you say it was a blast for you or it was blasphemy? Oh. (laughs) Combo? Sometimes. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Combo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, there she goes. No, I know. I I'm can't. Making her laugh. I'm yeah. doing my job. I'm making her laugh. I love it. <laughs> oh, I it's love been, it, Alessandra. Known to happen. Did you have a heckler that was a regular? Well, okay, I did. Be- there was besides your uncle Saul. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Uncle Saul. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I wish I had an uncle Saul. Um, maybe he would have taught me a few things. No, yeah. I, um, I, I did have a couple of people that followed me and, and would, you know, come and see my shows, but they weren't really hecklers, which was nice. But again, I, I sort of invite that. Like if people, you know, the bachelorettes, they would all with bachelor and bachelorette parties. My favorite was when people would shout things like you're moderately attractive moderately <laughs> so i just riff on that um like what would get so where am i am i like a new york five how do i get to like a new york seven um so, again i just play with them and have have fun because you know comedy is supposed to be just that fun exactly so that's why i miss it I do. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear what you were saying. Could you please put your teeth back in and say it again? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that kind of an audience. I love that. <laughs> to be able to, where they they understand How the humor. And they get... Seats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's costly to drink, huh? Starbucks and uh, Subway, by the way. 
That's, Jim is believe pretty it or not, it or not that's, we usually have a fancy one, but we had a busy day today, and they're not a sponsor, though they should be. Well, uh, Subway and Starbucks. You're listening, gang? We're, we're available. available. You got a commercial here with Jim and Kathy. Listen, we love Subway. We love Starbucks. I still eat the Subway tuna. The lad and lassie, as they say in Ireland. Yes. And lots of I Irish crack. <laughs> C-R-A-I-C. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I say that, whenever I have guests from Ireland, I always have to make sure we spell it because not yeah. everybody here knows what that means. No, <laughs> don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> no. Hey, we've got another reel here too, a real oh. reel. And uh, I'm going to play it and we'll surprise everybody. And then we'll talk about it when we come back. That sound good? I'm so excited. It's memory. If you need, to, if you need, need to powder your nose, uh, you got a moment to do that. Go to the, <laughs> the intermission. You don't need to see it. <laughs> That's right. Just put another quarter in the slot, folks. Put <laughs> the volume on while you pee so you can hear. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. More. If you didn't get enough of Kathy yet, there's more coming you your know. way right now. <laughs> Maybe after the scouts see you, then you'll have some free time? Yeah, well, you know, there was a time when I thought the pro scouts would be calling. And there was a time that I thought I'd be 5'9". Don't think I didn't notice you skipping out on the jelly on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Taking lazy to a whole new level. And thank you for untucking those balls, baby. You did it. I see some. Is my tooth falling out? And here we go. No. Is it loose? No, you're fine. <sighs> you did good, honey. Honey? Two outs. Two outs. You got to get back out there. Get back out there. Do it. Bring to fury. Yes. I'm going to screw you on a cruise ship on a Thursday in bad weather. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. Breathe. Hey, Gary. Hi. Gary, it's Nessa. Cliff, he knows your name. What are you doing? No. Act relaxed and calm. Breathe. What are you doing here? I uh, just need some paper for down at the station. Right, paper, paper, because it's a paper store. <laughs> what is your poison? Come on, I'm still at work. Gary, why don't you like me? What? I know, I am, I'm socially awkward and I'm not as pretty as other girls, but why? I mean, I'm all right, aren't I? Yeah, I... <laughs> what did Yates mean when he said pitched his mansion? Anyone? Anyone, 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 anyone. Listening to me? Not at all. Can you hear me back there? Oh, okay. Uh, listen, I, I, I know you're going camping this weekend, kids. I, I've read about what happens there. Please, protect yourselves. No, no drinking or smoking or partying. Catch a fish for crying out loud. Do you want me to get that? No, I like the sound. He doesn't. had some issues since, you know, nothing major, paranoia. Now I keep the TV on all night. The light is comforting. Celebrity news? Always. I like when they expose the big stars. I started out working for TMZ. You're kidding. No. I did the scoop on Lawrence Mitchell and the babysitter. Big Sam, by the way. Agatha. Agatha, wow. Well, that's a name you don't hear too often. I hate it. No, you shouldn't. No, it's just, it's, you know, today it's, it's an unusual name. I come in here a lot. Yeah, I live across the way over at Moss Acres. Me too. 1580. Really? I'm 1230. No, $15 and 80. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Merlin says Sometimes you're awesome. Sometimes I want to cry because, like, this yeah. room, it just yeah. takes me yeah. down memory lane and I just, I don't really watch my work. It's so like, no. it's fun yeah, a lot of people don't, they, they move to the next thing. Cause you know, you, you, you got to get out of that mindset of that character and they'll get ready for the next character or the next role. And, and how do you do that? How are you able to separate from, cause you know, obviously you really immerse yourself in the work and in the characters and you, you really take them on. How do you uh, detach and separate and prepare yourself to move on to the next character that you have to become when you are doing the acting part of what you do. I have a full exorcism. No, um, I- <laughs> That's what, what I thought. Do you have photos? <laughs> I have a therapist. You didn't send um, us those photos for some reason. 
<laughs> you know what's funny though? I did I, uh, last year. I was in a movie called Comedy of Horrors, and I play this demonic witch. And that was the only time I was like, "Ooh, this is a rough one to shake off," because I was so evil to the children that were in the scenes with me. And oh my lord, that was um, that was a tough one. It's it's easy for me. I I find that once you rap it's it's sad because you become like family with these actors um but then you just sort of like let it you just digest it and i kind of watch it like a little movie in my head of going like wow what an experience and then it just goes right into the memory bank and then i'm able to start clean clean slate because i have to say i've shot things where i've rapped on a tuesday and then i start something on a thursday and you just gotta jump in. So um, I also attest that to like great directors that really will help you play and go there. And um, even, you know, the movie Pitching Tents, I love that director that I worked with, Jacob. And we had so much fun where I was like the crazy kind of teacher. Um, actually, we're noticing a trend here. I play a lot of crazy teachers, a lot of crazy people. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I just, yeah, it's, uh, it's typecasting. <laughs> Do you know why the teacher wore sunglasses in the classroom? I don't. Oh God, I don't know this one. No. Because she had such bright pupils. <laughs> <laughs> Keep coming with the dad jokes. I love your, your, it. Your dad would have said that one, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. He's laughing up there. <laughs> and who's this? Oh hi. Hey, that's me in glasses. I love it. <laughs> and, or what I call flasses. So I have a bunch of glasses that are fake because, you know, for certain roles. So I call them flasses, fake glasses. I also, this is a fun exercise to do. If you're ever having self-doubt with yourself, grab a pair of glasses and look at yourself through a different lens. What? I have a good therapist. I Just like now. that. Right? I like that. Yes. Thank you, Seth Apple, <laughs> for paying my therapy. <laughs> but obviously that you and your therapist see eye to eye. <laughs> hey, oh, just doing the dad jokes. <laughs> Kathy Nothing and Jim appearing on uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines as your entertainment wow. in August. <laughs> I can't even get a job on Royal Caribbean. We're going to be on the boat that goes from, you know, uh, the Hudson Yards to Jersey City. How about that? <laughs> oh, Dingy Delight? Yeah. <laughs> dingy We're on delight. the Dingy Delight. I, I imagine us in feather boas and microphones and doing a little tete-a-tete. Uh, -tete. I love that's, it. That's the one where you don't pay to go on. They pay you to go on. <laughs> yes. The customer has to pay. <laughs> no, they yes. pay you to be a customer. <laughs> Look, now look at that look. Confident, is, resilient. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the desperate housewives kind of mom, which I, again, often play. I play the, pardon my language, bitchy moms. Um, that's sort of my brand or the, like the crazy, the crazy person, which I, I'm not, I'm really not. I'm like crazy fun, but not like, yeah. No, no, it's a very, yes, it's, it's a dry, it's, um. Yeah, there's a certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah, and there's also touches of uh minor touches of a Colleen Dewhurst, uh, which I think is sensational. Yeah, I picked Thank that you. yeah, I picked that up a little bit of a Colleen Dewhurst. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love she that. was fantastic, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except, yeah. Yeah. Uh the picture gives me the impression of come get me. <laughs> come get me and give me a job <laughs> come get me <laughs> come get me i'm available for a job on yes. tv or in movies <laughs> so how have you what was happening in kathy searle's life when the pandemic hit were you in the midst of i mean everybody that i've talked to on this show and elsewhere everybody was like oh jim 2020 was supposed to be the year new decade all this investment in my career, people who perform, all the tickets were sold out, all these tours were happening. And just anybody was saying that 2020 was such a promising year and they had all these major things lined up. And then March comes, lights out, everything stops. Yeah. What was Kathy doing or working on or getting ready to work on when things did stop March 2020? 
you know, I, I'm luckily, sorry, we don't have time. Can you join us next <laughs> week and tell us the answer to that? <laughs> I'll be here with That's Starbucks. Right. Yeah. Um, you know what? I So I've been very fortunate with uh, the commercial and voiceover work. I have a home studio, so I was already sort of prepped for that. Um, and I do stuff in Atlanta, so I've been doing self-tape auditions. So that wasn't too much of an adjustment. What was so hard was missing human connection. I mean, I the waiting rooms is where you meet some of my nearest and dearest still to this day. And that was what was so hard. Um, you know, I deal with anxiety and I talk about it a lot. I actually, you know, I love and hate social media, but I'm very open about the fact that I struggle with anxiety. Um, and you not a lot of performers do. And they mentioned yeah. it on the show that a lot of performers, anxiety, depression, uh, and some were the shyest kid in class. Yeah. And the that the work actually sure. allows them to grow and expand and communicate and learn about themselves in different ways that they didn't get to do earlier in life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's something that I think mental health should always be discussed. And so in the beginning, my anxiety really was rough. You know, it went from 20 milligrams of Celexa to 40. Um, now, did you have stage fright? Were you fearful oh, of being out on stage and doing things in front of people because oh. they may reject you or, or who knows what it is? You or? I have the worst stage fright. So, people that do, I, when I was at Williamstown doing a Katori Hall play, the actors the first night had no idea how bad my stage fright was. And they were looking at me like, is she okay? Is she going to go out? And then as soon as I stepped on the stage, I was fine. It's yeah. just that anticipation that- The anticipation, uh, right, right. But, you know, I love, I sort of, and I talk with young actors a lot of the times and I say, embrace the nerves because- Yes. Take the label off of it. What is it? It's just energy. Yes. And I, that, yeah. you know, I, I think, again, you got to work important. with it. Yeah. Well, we talked about that on this show a lot where, um, and I've mentioned it because I've experienced it and I still experience it when I'm going to do something really big, yeah. something that, you know, especially if it's in the career mode, um, sleepless night, the night before twisting and turning in the morning, your stomach's a little uh, tangled. Yeah. You're sort of like, okay, what am I going to wear? What am I going to do? Oh my God, is this going to work? And you're rehearsing all the things that could go wrong or what's going to happen. And you have the butterflies in your stomach. But the key is, like you're talking about, is to realize that those butterflies are very important because they they are what keep the juices flowing. They yeah. are what keep the passion and enthusiasm going. It means you really care and you really love what it is you're doing. The minute the butterflies fly the coop and you don't feel that angst. That's what I get lost. Nervous. <laughs> You've lost the passion and the, and the drive and the excitement about whatever that is. Yeah. And it's time to probably move on. And yeah. it could be with anything in life. But those butterflies are good because they keep you in check and they keep you striving for excellence and they keep you passionate about what it is you're going to do next. So yeah. that's right. Exactly. You, you learned. Don't. And it takes time for... Yeah. And wisdom and life lived to realize that, that actually you can parlay that anxious energy into some really cool things. Have you been able to do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, I always say work with it. I'll make jokes about it. I remember um, having a huge callback for Spike Lee for a project that he was working on. And I walked into the room and I curtsied. This was not too long ago, by the way. This was like a few years ago. And then I just curtsied to everyone that was behind the table. And I said, I'm bringing it back. Um, I just sort of go with it. Like, you know, who cares? Again, these people get nervous too. I think we forget that we put people on pedestals. Yes. And it's like, that's the only thing they have to get over is, is uh, or we have to get over, is the pedestal we've put them on. Yes. So Take it all, like just take deep breaths and, you know, bring that breath into the diaphragm, take the label off of it and know, and this is what I love. And I give advice to young actors all the time. Everyone in that room has auditioned to be there. The writer, director, casting director, producers, everybody has auditioned to be in that room as well. 
So if we all are in the same kind of boat, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to work with that then. Like we're all in the same boat. So it's just- When did you realize that? What, what was the pivotal moment, the aha moment for you where you said, okay, enough is enough, fixating on it. I'm going to make it work for me. What was that moment for you? You know, I would say, because I am a character actress, a lot of people would say, you're going to grow into the roles. You're going to grow into the roles. And I was trying to figure myself out, even though I started when I was 12. I would say in my 20s, it was like, you know, I thought I had to be the ingenue and the musical theater person, even though that really wasn't my path. Um, and I would say when I was in my late 20s, it started where I dyed my hair back to its natural color of a reddish brown. And I just started walking in the rooms and really just being me. And really now that I'm in my 40s, 42, um, I would say I've really embraced it. Like what you see is what you get. I'm a painting. It's do I belong in your museum? You know, I, if I'm a Basquiat, I don't want to be in the Monet Museum. So it's like the job is the museum. Sometimes we don't fit and that's okay. And I think we have to embrace the fact that there is no one else out there like me or you. And that's what we have to offer. And I wish I would have been told that in my 20s rather than you're a mind reader, be this, be that. It's like be that, everyone be that. Be else that. is taken. Yeah. Be your fucking self. Pardon my language, but it's true. Like just be you. I didn't know you spoke French. I, <laughs> oui, oui, monsieur. <laughs> 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 Je m'appelle uh, Kathy. I did take French in high school and we can tell I did really well with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Um, it, it's, it's very interesting. It really is because, um, yes, when you're talking about the twenties, those are those years where it's all, uh, you're finding yourself and you're finding your voice and you're finding your place. And where is that place? A lot of, you know, cause you're now shifting from, family and what they have set up for you and what they think you are or should be or, or whatever that may be and friends and, and teachers and everybody else. And now the wings are spreading and you're like, okay, I've got all that uh, background and that support system and that foundation, but I got to look in the mirror and say, what, who is this? And yeah. when you're in these industries, a lot of times, right, there is a cookie cutter, you know, you see a manufacturing assembly line, everybody sounds the same, everybody looks the same. This is the flavor of the month, this is the look of the month. And then you go through all the trouble to look that way. And then tomorrow, that's out. And now you got to shift into this other thing. Yeah. And uh, that, that could be that could play crazy with you. You know what I mean? Then because you start to lose the essence of who Kathy is who yeah. Jim is. So then you come to a certain point where you're like, okay, I could throw those. I mean, as we just saw evidenced in this incredible work that you've done thus far, all these looks, all these sounds, all these roles, all these images, which are brilliant. You, you really tackle them and you, you soak it all up. But then when you take all that off and you look in the mirror and you see Kathy, it's who is Kathy? Yeah. And, uh, She's and, not perfect. She's messy. She's, you know, and that's the type of work that I do. I love comedy, but yeah. comedy has yeah. got to be grounded in truth. And I think yes. now as I keep getting older too. It's like, you know, it's not always, but um, bum ching, you know, it's yes. Can I do a multi-camera sitcom line, line joke? Absolutely. Um, but the interesting comedies now are a little messy, are a little dark, you know, it's, it's, I look at someone like Pamela Adlon on Better Things, and I think that's comedy. That's a modern day version of a sitcom, and it's it's messy and ugly and beautiful and poignant, and that's the type of work and stories I want to be telling. But I had to go through the shit. I had to date the assholes. I had to, you know, be the desperate, you know, like me, love me, and let, you know, let's not get it twisted. There are still moments that I'm like, like me, love me. Um, but in then case I, you're just joining us, folks, this is Kathy Searle. Yeah. <laughs> Who? Um, thanks for tuning in, Mom. Ooh, what's she talking um, about? Is she reading? Is she re reading the pages of the Inquirer out loud for us right now? 
Yes. So, Reading it in reverse. What am I doing? And, um, and you fortunately have not had the pleasure of being in it. No, no. Well, I mean, you? I'd love to be though. Like do you I want to be a child with like 17 heads? Yeah. Oh, so I'd like it. Yeah. <laughs> what about soap operas? I did them. Yeah, back in the day. Did, yeah, tell us, tell us, tell us about some of the background and all that I, too. Yeah, I, I did like a recurring on uh, As the World Turns um, as a nurse. I forget what it was. It was like Nurse Kelly or something. Um, but they were like small little like co-stars, but I would come back. Um, I never thought I was good at those because um, I was always like looking through charts and like, what am I doing? Um, but they were a blast. It was block dress tape. So kind of like a play. I, it, for me, I love it. Just and when I did Hope and Faith too, that was you know a, a sitcom where it's block dress tape. Sometimes you tape the scene and and then do it and live in front of the audience. And to me, I love it. I love kind of fast and furious where I don't have time to think because then I'm just going on instinct, adrenaline, instinct, and I'm just in it. Um, but yeah, soaps were great. I kind of I kind of miss them. Although we do have like you know, the nighttime stories. Grey's Anatomy is, is you know, I I love, I, I mean, what are we, season 12, 13 at this point, and I'm still watching. Um, but yeah, I, I loved, I loved those days. I do, I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a role or a show that you wish you had been on and? Uh... How I Met Your Mother. I loved that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I loved that series. Um, right now, Marvelous Maisel, Mrs. Maisel, I love that show. I think it's brilliant. I think what Amy Sherman Palladino and her husband have created is a masterpiece. Um, I am very excited. There's a new series that Danny Strong, who is brilliant, who co-created Empire, uh, he did called Dope Sick, which is based on the opioid crisis. And yes. that... I had auditioned for a few of those roles and I was like, oh, you know, again, the comedy, but then going complete opposite where, uh, you know, one of the roles I auditioned for was someone who was addicted to the drugs and, and it was great to kind of even jump in and just audition for that type of a role is great. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool. I, we, is there a role that is an ultimate role for you? Do you prefer comedy over drama or do I love like both? I do love both. And I will say I I did a movie during the pandemic, which was in North Carolina. Um, and I really kind of fought for the role because it was a mom and she was a mom of a teenage son and um, a, a young daughter that was 10 years old. And I have played a lot of commercial moms, but in film, I've only played a few moms. And I really wanted to give life to this character because I loved her on the paper. I really did, but I thought, I want to bring Kathy as, and I don't have children, I'm a dog mom, um, but all of my friends have kids. And I really just felt I wanted to play this woman and, and make her come to life. And um, it was fascinating. And the first day when I met Ty Simpkins who played my son, it was like immediate where I was so protective of him. And even his real mom had reached out and said, you know, thank you so much. He said, like, you became set mom. And he, we were joking because he had, you know, he's like a child star. So his, he's had Elizabeth Banks as his mom, Russell Crowe as his dad, and then Kathy Searle as his mom. So I was like, well, you went from here to mediocre. No, um, but I loved, <laughs> I loved it just because I, the idea of playing moms and elevating them and making them modern you know, moms have tattoos, moms are messy, moms are funny, ballsy, you know, those types of roles I really do want to play. And so if we can find the balance in a multi-camera sitcom, I mean, I do love the old school comedies. Um, I would love to play it and then like do a Neil LeBute play at night, just yes. so dark and edgy and have the light and then the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. That's cool. I mean, you, you, so you really have an understanding of what it is that speaks to you. Um, 
What, what is the process like for you when you have a role? How do you prepare? What are some of the things that you do? Do you shut the phone off, close the shades and, and disappear for a while? Do you meditate or, you know, what, what are some of the things that you do to get ready when you know you got to take on something sizable? Yeah, I, so I am a huge music fan, music nerd. So the first thing I do is I read the script and then I read it again and then I come up with a playlist of the songs that my character would listen to. And when I'm really working on the character, that's when I start to listen to the music as well. And I just find that really lovely balance of like modern day, like Kathy meets the character. So I, I find the balance. I It's all roles are gonna be Kathy, but living in the circumstances of. So um, that music will always help me. and. I still have playlists that I'll listen to and I'll think, oh my God, and I can go right back. I can remember a scene that I had done and I think, oh, you know, it's, and it's, the music is all over the place sometimes. It'll be like Adele and then Neil Young. Um, so yeah, music nerd. And that's really when I create and, um, and personalize it, you know, with Where's Rose playing a mom of two, I, as soon as I met those kids and I reached out to them and talked to them briefly beforehand too. Um, I love when we can have that opportunity. I'm working on something um, over the summer and I just reached out to the young lady that is, is my counterpart. And I said, you know, do you want to do a little zoom or a coffee date? Because I do love to meet the actors that I'm working with beforehand just to, you know, check in and have them know they're safe with me. Right. I'm, you yeah. know, it's, it's going to be, you will know you have a partner, you know, I'm going to have your back in these scenes, no matter what, whether I like exactly. it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Love, uh, you audition for a role on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, you, yeah. uh, wait a minute. You are intuitive. You're psychic. That's exactly what I was going I to throw it. and ask. Oh um, my God. We, Jim and I are on the same page. This you know, whole thing right. here, this whole it's, thing, I tell you, we've got to go on the road. The, etiquette, the Irish, the, you know, we got to, it's, it's, and the levity, we're together. And, and um, the levity. I would absolutely audition for a role on Grey's Anatomy, but I am going to tell you the truth. I'd be scared shitless because medical jargon, oh my Lord. I do a lot of voiceovers and when I get the, you know, Humera Adalimumab uh, <laughs> audition, I, it's like the only word that I can say. Um, that, but it took me, you know, 20 minutes of looking and listening to the pronunciations, but it makes me panic auditions. Like, wait, you'll see, I'm going to get a medical audition like next week. Thanks, <laughs> Alessandra. It always happens whenever I talk about something the next week, I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, nurse ratchet. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I totally would. And I love Shonda Rhimes. I thank God for Shonda Rhimes. I love what she's doing where, you know, the projects are female based and it doesn't matter yeah. the race. It's, you know, who's the best for the job. I bow down to her. She's got some exciting shows coming up too. Can't wait. She does. That, yeah. yeah, I know that's, that's really exciting. Um, who's oh that? my God. We do our digging here at the show. Oh my God. How and, old and, is and, that? Her? Yeah. And guys, did you, bangs, did you guys, know, did you know man. what was going to, you know, were you already, uh, look, you, know, you have, it looks like you have that look in your eyes. Like I have some things that I'm going to be doing and so, they're going oh to be, God. yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. cool shot? It's, I mean, talk about eighties, the scrunchies, the hoop earrings. I love, I kind of have my bitch hoop earrings on. I'm not wearing <laughs> a blazer and a turtleneck. I'm telling you, I came out of the womb an old soul. So even there, I was like, you know, I guess I'm going to be a teacher. <laughs> Alessandra goes, oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're going to be a teacher. <laughs> I, how old I was in that picture. I don't know, but oof, love a turtleneck. I was having what was a she thinking? moment then. What, what do you think was she was thinking? thinking? And what would she say now if she realized all these wonderful things that have happened in your life? Oh, I, you know what? I would go back to her and I would say, Hey kiddo, everything's going to be fine. Just believe in yourself. Cause no one else will. I mean, you, your family loves you, but you really have to own who you are and just trust. There's a reason I have a tattooed on my wrist. Just trust. It's going to happen. Trust. Right. Everything, right. you know, 
I think we forget this in life too. Everything is temporary. This was what right. was so tough about the pandemic. There was no end date of when is this, it's still going on. And so I think we have this feeling of, you know, I, I love Alessandro, you said about impending doom. And I, I totally get that feeling, but it's remembering we are the ocean. The wave hits, it goes right back into the water. It's all connected. It's just, it's temporary. Good things are temporary. Shitty things are temporary. It's all just sort of the pendulum swings, light and dark. And, and you know, it's remembering that we have to love ourselves. We have to love others. And that's how we get through the good times and the bad times, you know, when you want to be there for people when they are at their best and at their worst. And I th think that's really what I took out of this pandemic, which was, you know, I'll never take people for granted. I will never take my friendships for granted. I will never take hugs for granted. That was the biggest thing. Oh. Like, oh, you're, you're up Shit's Creek without a paddle because I am a hugger. And they were like, what is Kathy going to do? Let me tell you, vaccination, I was, you know, two weeks after going up to everybody on the street hugging. I was like, you need a hug. You need a hug. I was the Oprah of hugs and I loved it. But we forgot. We forgot just human touch. I, I did. I hugged this. I, there's a lot of homeless people in my neighborhood and I know a lot of them. And I hadn't seen one of the gentlemen and I had gotten so excited and I hugged him and he started to cry. And I said, I know, I know. It's, we haven't been just connected. Um, yeah, I, yeah. it's something that I, yeah, will will never ever take for granted. No, you really can't. No, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, people have been missing that. And uh, that's very beautiful that you did that, uh, my friend. Just yeah. shows the essence of who you are and uh, as well as who this is. How? Oh, the blondie. <laughs> oh, what the was this for? Thing. You know what's funny? I um so I, <laughs> I, like love, the, I like the way you do that. Little, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Um, I love blonde on me. I was blonde for quite some time, but I gotta say, I never really booked as a blonde. <laughs> so everybody was like, Can you stop with the blonde? Can you? I guess I was like thinking I wanted to be Amy Poehler. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the quirky little, you know, the mom with the side smirk and, you know, my, ha my dem husband, oh, husband, <laughs> you don't know why I've made myself from Fargo. Oh my God. We are going down memory lane of headshots too. Um, you know what I love? <laughs> I love this photographer too. This, this man is still a friend of mine, Anthony Grasso, wonderful actor, um, and photographer, uh, what great extensions those were. I can't grow my hair that long. That's why I have wigs and extensions. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a new Broadway play, doesn't it? Wigs and extensions. <laughs> Write that down. 2023. Wigs and extensions. Yes, I will be replaced by Judy Greer. Um, I always replace myself with <laughs> Judy Greer because I love her. Uh, wow, I am all about the shit-eating grins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody said, can I come to North Carolina and give you a hug? Is that Alessandra? Yes. Alessandra, yeah. I, where in North Carolina are you? Oh my God. This is a selfie I took in my bathroom, sitting on the floor. I Okay, this is going to sound weird, guys, but <laughs> when I get- I'm glad ready, that you uh, clarified that. Yeah. The floor, the floor. The floor of the bathroom. My bathroom is carpeted and I love the sound of running water. I find it so calming. I don't know if it's because I'm a Pisces, but it's so calming to me. And I have to tell you, I wrote my best stand up sitting and listening to the water run. I've you created wrote your best stand up sitting? Sitting on the bathroom floor, on the bathroom floor, and did my That's best work in there. That is cool, <laughs> I tell you. That's a secret that I would never tell anybody. Uh, but I just did. <laughs> now everybody knows. But yeah, now if you know. listen to running water, there's a lot of creativity that's happened in, in my magical bathroom, as I call it. I've do you like, to, do you like to sleep to white noise? No, I don't. I just, um, I, well, actually that's not true. I do have a fan going. Like a, a light fan. Yeah. 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 Nothing like a light fan. I like it a little cool in the room. Don't like yeah. sleeping hot this time of year is not fun for me because I'm sweating from everything. Y'all, I was too skinny then. I mean, 
Someone needed to tell me eat a burger, but I do like, look at those collarbones. Um, I'm a woman with <laughs> my collarbones right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, another photographer that I love. Yeah, we did this photo shoot. This was really for my website where I just want to kind of goofy pictures of, of myself. And we had a blast. It poured outside. And so my hair got really messed up, but I loved it. We had such a oh, fun great shoot. Yeah, it's a great yeah. shot. That's just a local uh, horse that you can find in um, lower Manhattan. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, very friendly, very friendly. Um, oh, this is a good friend of mine, Bob. We did more headshot pictures, uh, or I'm sorry, website pictures. And I just wanted to do a goofy group of pictures. And uh, this, again, not my not my hair. It's It's a weave. I love a good weave. <laughs> it's just popping up out of the corner um yeah limited edition because guess what that's me limited edition <laughs> <laughs> that is funny uh, oh these are oh gosh some of my best girlfriends right next to me is my best girlfriend natalie nepp who's a brilliant actress sam strelitz joe armanox these women, now, Sam and Joe were the leads in Red Dead Redemption, that video oh, game, yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. I got to I did like the popul uh, the population voices, so I, because I do a lot of accents, but yeah. video games are fun. I mean, I oh, blow up the record all the time, but they were the stars of those video games. And boy, oh boy, they have a fan base. Well deserved too, because they are stunningly talented actresses. So, what are the, some of the voices that you've had the pleasure of doing that people might recognize or know? Or so I've done a lot of video games. I do a lot of accents. Um, so I, you'll never remember me. Um, I have done a lot of voiceovers. I used to be the voice of Liberty Bank in Connecticut, no less. Um, I am the voice of Molly Sharman Bear, Mama Sharman. It's really? my favorite job. It's my favorite job. I love working for this company so much. You have no idea. I are you able to do a little of it so they hear it? Oh, sure. Um, okay. What's uh, the one um, that's airing right now? Uh, maybe um, uh, roll it back, everybody. Like she's got this like fun energy to her um, that I just I love Molly. I love playing Molly because she's just the sweetest bear. I play the blue and the red bear and, and the tan. Um, and my husband, who's played by Rob Pruitt, it's heaven. It's It's been one of the best jobs and one of the most incredible companies to work for. And as we saw during the pandemic, they really were cranking out that toilet paper and were doing everything they could to meet the demand. And um, it, it's just, it's been a, a dream to play an animated bear. I mean... It's incredible. And a, Were the a, sessions, yeah. are the sessions really long, the voiceover sessions when you're doing them? No, because you know, we've been doing them so long. So it's it's we jump in and the producers know us so well. And um, you know, I do a lot of promos for uh there's a wonderful uh company called Up TV. And oh, yeah. I love yeah. their producers say, We write in your voice now because they get to know me. And I love that. I love yeah working with repeat producers and they know like, okay, she's the, you know, she could be the crazy one. So let's play with that. And um, it's just so fun and accents are great. I do a lot of um, Eastern European and a uh, lot of Southern depending upon, you know, where in the South. Um, you have a yeah. favorite accent that just comes to you naturally. That's one of your favorite. The Russian. I play the Russian and I love playing the Russian because I feel like it's the Serbian or, or the Russia. Yeah. Um, I, I loved, I did a role in body of proof where I played a Serbian killer and I went to a Serbian church. This is for anybody that needs accents, go to the locals, go and find the locals yes. and record your lines. Right. Don't, you know, listening to tapes and all of that is great. But if you have somebody doing your lines, yes. you hear it and the pattern and because they are local, that right. poor Serbian priest, I made him, I made a donation. He was like, why am I talking about cutting up bodies? And I said, don't ask. Um, I didn't do it. <laughs> <It's just> 
But um, yeah, I love any any time I can and play or embody a Russian or Serbian woman. I would imagine you must be able to do the Irish rogue too, huh? I do a little bit of the Irish. It depends. I'm not as good as others, but um, I I do. <laughs> That's all you get of the Irish right now. That's it. Um, what would yeah. the Russians say about the Jim Masters show? Oh, the Russians. They would love the Jim Masters. He is hilarious and talented, and we love him. He's a good man. He's good egg. We like the good egg. Strong. Strong like good. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Do you, uh, I know people probably thinking too, does Kathy sing? I do. Well? I'm very quiet about it. You know, a lot of my friends <laughs> are like Ryan because, he, you know, brilliant Broadway performers. And that is the one thing that I will say I'm very shy about. I mean, talk about nerves. Ooh, musical theater. Because I bow down to my friends. They are able to be in a scene and then jump into song. I just think it's incredible. And it's, it's a skill set. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it just terrifies me. So anytime somebody does say like, we've got a musical, I'll go, okay, yeah. Cause I gotta do it. I gotta scare the crap out of myself because I then don't get complacent. I always say, do things that you're afraid of. I hate heights, get on a plane, get in a hot air balloon, do what you can, face the fears. Cause you could learn something from it. Maybe, you know, you get over that fear. But I do love singing, but it's got to be a character. That's what I loved yeah. about Joan Rivers. You know, I could, it was easy for me to bust out into song as Joan because, you know, I was embodying her. But if it's like, if it's just Kathy, it's terrifying. Talk about vulnerability. Yeah. Oof. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I do, I, I dabble in it. <laughs> what are some things that you're working on now that you're very excited about that are coming up that people might be able to uh, to look out for? Yes. So I have a really lovely movie that we saw a little clip of called Love and yes. Kill Mary. And it will be coming to theaters in, uh, I believe, October, November. Um, and nice. we are in 35 cities, I believe, um, which is amazing. And then uh, weeks later, it'll be, you know, available on demand. But I'm just so happy because it's a romantic comedy. And I love movies that end with happiness and joy. Yes. I know people are kind of like, meh, we know what's going to happen. I love movies like that. We need that right now. Like, give me some comedy. So I'm just so happy that people get to see this sweet little movie and um, it ran the festivals and I won a ton of awards, which I was so honored that people would want to give me awards for my work. I'm always like, you like this? I'm like, you like me. You <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. And I love Sally Fields as, you know, after every job, am I ever going to work again? I'm the same way. I'm like, will anyone ever hire me again? Oh. So if Sally Fields is saying that, I thought, shit, it doesn't get easier, huh, Sally? Thanks. <laughs> Do you have a dream role? Oh my gosh, of like a uh, something that was that happened before. I, I would say Kate and Alley. If they did a Kate and Alley reboot, that would be an oh, absolute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, a show like a Mary Tyler Moore as well. You know, I'm I am not married. I don't have kids and. I live in a studio apartment. Basically, I just want a reality show. <laughs> Have the cameras come here and just film my everyday life of auditioning for voiceovers. I mean, you know, like, it's so absurd sometimes the auditions I have. I'm so grateful that people pay me to talk. <laughs> it's, that's why I'll, it'll never, you know, the money that I make in voiceovers affords me to do the independent film too, which I, you know, don't take anything for granted. So I'm always right. bowing down to people thinking, you're paying me to have this much fun? Thank <laughs> and I'm not doing a 17 hour shoot with like, you know, a romantic scene out on a beach and it's 20 degrees. And I'm thinking, you know, you look good, but boy, oh boy, I would love an egg with sriracha right now. <laughs> <So it's> <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you, do you, it's true. Do you, My said that to me. We worked on a movie together and I said, look, you gotta, you gotta pretend that you like me. You gotta be flirting with me. And he said, honey, I need an egg covered with sriracha right now. And I said, that sounds so good. Let that be yeah. the inspiration of our love romantic. Right. And it was, 
if I mean, we jokingly are like, wow, we really look like we love each other. And it's because we were both thinking about craft service. About, and yeah. that, egg yeah. and that will do it. I just, I'd call that the food of love. <laughs> <laughs> True. That and is the food of love. Foodie. Yeah. So, you know, you I, I'm a human garbage can. So I'm like, you got food? I'll eat it. Let me, you know, have me. You like to cook? No, because I live in 375 square feet and my, my kitchen is the size of a child's playhouse. So, is it yeah. really? So, it you is. have one pot, one pan, one fork, one spoon, one knife? Yeah, I mean, I might as well have like, you know, a, a children's kitchen. <laughs> but I love ordering out. Oh, I do you have know. the easy bake oven? I do. <laughs> Actually, you know what's funny? I did get this very tiny like turquoise blue toaster oven that's available on Amazon for $25. And what's so nice, <laughs> I just cooked two cookies. <laughs> Put my two cookies in there and that's my my nightly treat. <laughs> the ridiculous. question is what kind of cookies? Chocolate chip, I'm boring. Sometimes red velvet. Like, this is a foodie crowd. Oh, oh you is? talk food, Ooh. they start rolling. Oh, this is a foodie crowd. They love oh. food. Yeah. Yes, I love, love the foods. <laughs> well, what if you were to cook, like if people were stopping by and you had to whip something up, what would be a Kathy favorite Ooh. other than reservations? Yeah, <laughs> Uber Eats. Oh. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm dating a British man and he loves to cook. And when I was in London, we made a paella together. And really? wow. it was incredible. And it was yeah. with fish and all these yeah. different, it was, I have to say there's a love language with making food with someone. And also a paella takes about 40 minutes and you just sit and you talk in the kitchen and oh, it's just heaven. So yeah. um, I let's hope he actually gets to the United States and he can cook paella in my tiny kitchen. Right. When they yeah, open up the borders, oh, it's so uh, hard. We met before the pandemic too. Yeah, I mean, really, we had like a pandemic romance. So he's in London now? In London, he lives in London and they're not allowed here. So I've gone over there twice, third time coming up uh, next month. And then- so, God and, God, and are you able to? Because I know they had lockdowns in England too that uh, have been their strict. Their lockdowns were brutal. They really were, yeah. Um, but yes, I was able to, I went out- uh, this time last year uh, for about three and a half weeks, which was incredible. Um, and they weren't locked down like they were. The second time I went, we just quarantined in a hotel. It was great. We ordered Uber Eats and it was fun. And we watched, oh my God, the reality TV in, in the UK is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. I loved yeah. every second. It's incredible, of it. right? Yeah, it's incredible. It's awful. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then I introduced him to my favorite reality shows like Married at First Sight. And, you know, it was just laughing and, and being goofballs together. But now I, I won't have to quarantine now that I'm fully vaxxed and, you know, I'll be able to go out there. And I think by, yes, yeah, September, I won't have to, to quarantine for like eight days. But now you can quarantine together, which is nice. Which is to, right. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. How yeah. come you love what you do? You're so passionate and enthusiastic and you really, it's obvious, Kathy, that uh, you were meant to do this and it's in your DNA. What are some of those blessings and joys in your life that, you know, you, you continue to call upon that uh, keep you flowing and going? I mean, I am a very lucky lady. I have to say my family is incredibly supportive and always have been, even when I'm in my darkest time of going, am I ever going to work again? I don't know. I'm scared. They always have my back. And same thing with my friends. They are my touchstones. Um, you know, I always, it's funny. A lot of people will say this to me. Oh my God, you're 42 and you're not married. And I'll get a lot of that. Like, what's wrong with you? And I think to myself, I, it took a long time for me to really fall in love with me. That's an ever going process. Um, and my friendships, I am so blessed with yeah. the girlfriends that I have. And it was something that I dreamt of as a kid. You know, I was, I always kind of felt like a floater. I never really had like a great group of friends. I, um, but now in my thirties and forties, I've got these incredible friends that I feel so blessed to have. Um, and what keeps me going every day is that 
this is what I was born to do. I was born to be a storyteller. I was born to become someone that is a heightened version of myself living in the circumstances of, and that hopefully I'll be able to take someone on a journey. It's why I do love romantic comedies because you know, I, I'm the quirky girl and it's great to see the quirky girl get the hot guy and, uh, or that the movie ends and she's found herself. I love stories like that. So I, you know, I, I love, love, love. Um, and I, I don't lose that. And, and it's still magical to me. Every time I go on a set, it is, it's heaven. When I go on the lots in LA, it's it's walking into Wonderland. And when I lose that, that's when I know it's time to pack it in and do something else. But you know what also inspires me is giving back. I yes, have been so yeah. blessed financially with the jobs that I've had that I'm able to give back um, and also to teach. I learn yeah. a lot from, from teaching kids and they make me want to be fearless. You know, as an adult, you kind of go, well, I got bills to pay. I need this role for this reason. And the kids, they just go like, screw it. I love working with them too. If yeah. I look at a kid who goes, I didn't believe that, I'll beg for another take. Because I know, I'm like, that kid, is he, he's the bullshit meter. So let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love people who like, don't work with kids and dogs. I'm like, work with kids and dogs. I did a Soresto commercial with uh, a dog that was incredible. And I was like, you know what? This dog is doing harder work than I am. I'm just answering the door. And <laughs> this poor dog is like bringing different things. I'm also fascinated by animal agents. I would love that to be a series. Hello, Christopher Guest. Mm, like yes. Christopher Guest. I love you. I like that idea. I like that idea. Alessandra asked, would you do one of those Hallmark specials? Or yes. a, like a lifetime movie network yes. movie or something. You guys, I was you devastated. Would. Well, you said that. Not. You said that. Yes, yes. Call right yes. now, please. Well, I'm up so till it's, eleven. <laughs> yeah, I was actually up for a couple of scenes in a lifetime Christmas movie, and I was like, <gasps> and then I didn't get the role. I was very sad, but it's okay. Again, not my role. It wasn't meant for me. Meant for somebody else. But I do. I love them. They are so cheesy, but I love them. Actually. My boyfriend and I, during the holidays, because we couldn't be together, we made one minute Christmas movies sort of like Lifetime and Hallmark. You know what's going to happen within the first yeah, 60 yeah. seconds. So we just did, yeah. you know, 60 second short uh, comedic films for the app Rizzle, which was great. It's sort of like the other version of TikTok. Um, it's, we had a blast doing them, but I do, I love them. You know, again, what's going to happen, but it brings joy. And there are some brilliant actors. My buddy Anna Klumski had done one that I just absolutely loved with, uh, I think it was with Christian Chenoweth. Um, but they're yeah. fun. They, you know, they're, yeah, right. they're just easy movies that you can sit back and, and laugh and get taken on a journey. And I love those. What, a, what about uh, writing? And, you know, you talked about some things that you've created that come to fruition. Do you like the behind the scenes, the screenwriting, putting productions together as well? I like so creating cool. characters. No, it's, you know what? And I loved writing stand up, and I MC a lot of events and whatnot, but you know, it's, it's lonely. I, that's why I think I miss stand up, but then at the same time, it's like, Oh God, I'm going to have to sit and just write on my own. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe being in a writer's room, I wouldn't mind that bouncing and improv sketch comedy. I love that. Um, but no, <laughs> I hope and pray that somebody can write me a role. I know everybody's like, you got to write that script. You got to write that script. And it's sort of like, well, can we create it together? Isn't there a writer out there that just fancies me and is yeah, like, oh, it's easy. Is, I can write for her. Is, it, is it intuitive and they just start, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy. You know, I, guess, I feel yeah. like you meet me and you go the first 60 seconds and you kind of go, I know where this is going to go. Um, <laughs> Alessandra in North Carolina is asking a male actor that you've always wanted to act opposite. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. And I will tell you a very funny story. I used to cater, you know, survival jobs. I worked kids party. Yeah. Cater Everything. Yeah. Everything. What you do. And there was an event and there were tons of, of celebrities. Sir Ian McKellen sitting with Mon Monica Lewinsky, which I thought was hilarious. Interesting um, combo. 
Who did the play skating there? (laughs) They are pals, which was bizarre, but you know what? To each his own. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's Um, it. But was standing there and I put my hand out near his back and his wife said, oh, honey, I think the waitress needs you. And he turned around and I froze and I said, I'm so embarrassed, but I, I just wanted to feel your energy radiating. And then his wife started laughing and she was like, honey, like <laughs> it was amazing. And he started to laugh and he hugged me and we just, just I mean, cause it was so bizarre. Why did I, you know, do that? Like, oh, the Denzel Washington energy, but I loved, he didn't miss a beat and we had a good laugh about it. Um, I would have loved to have worked with Robin Williams. He was another one that I got to wait on that was just so kind. He and his his wife were so lovely to me. And he said to me, he was like, you're an actress, aren't you? And I said, well, actually I, I do a lot of comedy. And he said, yeah, I can tell. Don't give up, please. And I just remember thinking, yeah. Robin Williams told me not to give up. So I feel like if I give up, I'm going to disappoint Robin Williams and he's one of my heroes. So right. you know. watching from above. Exactly. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Who are some others that, uh, well, obviously Steve Martin, I would love to work with. I love Kevin Hart. I, I think Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish and I would have a blast together. Like I think about like dinners that I would love to have and comedians like that. Oh, I would love to do a movie with them. And I just think like, can I somehow be their daughter, even though we're similarly aged? <laughs> like, what world can Kevin Hart and T- uh, Tiffany be my my mom and dad? <laughs> now, when you tell people 42, what do you say to the ones that say, oh, I thought you were 34? <laughs> and then you Thank say- you. <laughs> Thank you. And my Botox doctor, thanks as well. I've been doing it preventative since I was in my 20s. Um, so, so when you, know, you I, tell them you're 42 and they said, oh, really? I thought you were 34. Do you say, no, no, I said that wrong. I play from 34 to 42. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you are paying me, I will play whatever age you whatever. want me. Ever. Um, you want me to be 28? I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, you know what? Age is such a, it's such a state of mind really. And, and, you know, again, working with kids keeps me young. So I, who cares? You know, I, I know a lot of women are like, you really shouldn't say your real age. And I think why again, it's like, it and celebrate it. You know? yeah, you're I've here, been, you're breathing, you're healthy. You're here well, now. I've made mistakes. I've, you know, I, I'm here. I, yes. And this is, the person I'm becoming. And I find, you know, everybody ages like a fine wine. Who cares yeah. if I get gray hairs? I'll dye it or not. When I was 17, it was a very good oh. year. <laughs> yes, please. I know. <laughs> um, Tyler Perry is a dream, Alessandra. Tyler Perry is a dream. And let me tell you, it's a fun, fun story. Um, recently, he was doing a movie and he was casting. He needed an Irish woman. And I was like, this is my moment <laughs> because Tyler Perry is incredibly philanthropic. And to work with him, just to sit with him and, and talk about the charitable work that he has done, um, you know, growing up and wanting to be an actor, you want to be able to make money and be able to help those in need. And he has done yes. just that. And so I had actually written to Tyler Perry's casting director about this project. And I said, I will give you the Irish accent. I will do whatever I can. And I had two auditions where I didn't book it, but I, I really talked about the fact that I would work for free for that man of all of the incredible work that he has done and quietly. And, you know, even I'm, I'm not at that level, but I've been quietly doing things and I highly recommend if you can get friends together, put bags together for homeless people at Christmas time where you put sandwiches and socks and things like that. And, um, you know, a $5 bill can make, you know, a, a night for them. And so anything you can do to give back. Um, and he, that's why he would just be a, a God. And you know what I would say to him? Hey, Tyler, you know, everybody. Can you help yeah. me? Because what's the right. worst you can say? No. I mean, right. exactly. Yeah. He's okay. helped many people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, could you introduce me to some fabulous producer that you think would like me? 
I, I say to actors now, if you know somebody and you've got the talent to back it up, ask, what's the worst that can happen? They'll say no. I, I felt like that was, oh, I never want to ask because that'll make me vulnerable and I don't want to be weak. Vulnerability is strength. If I could yes. be, you know, ask my friends like, oh, hey, can you put in a good word for me? If they don't, they don't. I'm not going to take offense to it. It's, you know. Vulnerability, people think is a weakness, but it really isn't. And kindness I, isn't. Yeah. No, no, that's not no. Uh, as well. well. I know a lot of people say, oh, God, but you're so kind. And listen, I've been kicked in the butt for it. I've been taken advantage of, but I, I wouldn't change a goddamn thing. <laughs> I really wouldn't. <laughs> Because I really believe that, you know, everything does happen for a reason and, um, you know, be kind to everybody because you don't yes. know the day that they're having or the week and, you know, a smile can make somebody's entire month. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, well, me yeah. You mentioned philanthropic. Um, I remember the two of them dating in high school. They were homecoming king and queen. Did you meet Phil and Thropic? I sure did. And I got to tell you, that bitch of Thropic, she just uh, bumped me out. I didn't, I wasn't even nominated for prom queen. Yeah, well, she, she, she left Phil and she started dating manual labor. <laughs> yes. yes, I know manual labor very well. Your dad would be loving this right now. <laughs> He'd be like, now you're talking, talking my language, kiddos. I, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is funny. You look very comfy and casual now, up on arm on couch. Yeah. Tell it. Tell, tell us about the comfy spot you're in right now. My I am uh, Edward R. Murrow, and this is Person to Person on CBS. We're coming to you now from the 375 square foot. It's not about the uh, quantity; it is the quality. Yes, beautiful it is. home of Kathy Searle in it's New York beautiful. City. Beautiful. On this very lush couch. There, listen, my Ashley Home Furniture pull-out bed couch is a delight. Also, let's talk about my tacky edition, which I'm really excited about. That's right. It's a flamingo lamp. Yeah. It's a flamingo lamp. And you can't, it's so bright that you can't really see, but the feathers. Is that Sometimes, what that is? Is that a feather? Yeah, it's it's a, a full on flamingo lamp. Like, come on, come on. What's what's what is happening here? That looks like the sun. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people joke. They're like, that sounded like Phyllis Stiller when you did that, didn't it? I'm telling you, my laugh goes crazy. It does. I snort. It just, you know, I'll cackle. My apartment is kind of like Disney World because I have a lot of inspirational quotes. Yes. So everybody comes yeah. there and they're like, oh, it's very happy here. And that's what I always want people to feel. You, you know, have a favorite inspirational quote? Be so good they can't ignore you. Oh, I like that. Steve Martin. You know which one I like? Right, is it? That I actually, I, I, I do these series of master's mantras and I post them on Facebook. And then I do uh, videos on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, that are inspirational, positive, uh, often imitated never duplicated. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. I might want to get that framed. Calligraphy. <laughs> 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 I love that, seriously. Yeah, it's so true, <laughs> right? You know? I feel like huh? you are, can you do calligraphy? I feel like you can. That I can do it? Uh, I've, I can, can do some of it. Yeah, I, uh, I studied, uh, I have mentioned a couple times on the show, I studied architecture and design before I went into the crazy world of television and radio and stage and film. So I love design yeah. and I love, you know, creativity. Merlin's been asking, she's in Ontario, can we meet your pet, please? Okay, so my dog is she with She either asks dog. one of two things. She wants to meet the pet usually, or she wants you to sing. Oh. <laughs> so, uh <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Uh, Alessandra likes this other one that I posted on Facebook. Jim, I love the one where you said intelligence and kindness are sexy. It is. Let me tell you, we all need some kindness. Really. It, it goes a long way. Um, so, I love, you know, as an actor, yeah. I do 
research on like names, character names. So if I was going in for gym masters, I would immediately think masters, like master of everything. And I feel like you are like you were you're, that name was meant for you. I love that. I appreciate that. You know, a lot of people think I made that name up for TV and radio. You're, 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 you can't be Jim Masters. You're, you're probably Harvey Lopperwitz or something. You changed it. Said, no, I'm the fifth one. It goes back to England, Ireland. I'm the real deal. I love the funniest thing is when I'm on the phone, like with a customer service rep, mm -hmm. and uh, they're saying, okay, well, how do you spell Masters? I'm like, huh? How do you spell hmm. Masters? I, well, so how I'll would someone say, so I, I would say, have you heard possibly maybe of the golf tournament or the college degree? Oh, masters. Yeah, masters. <laughs> yeah. I'm really the craziest. You with two S's? I don't know. That's uh yeah, I don't know how you would. Oh, and this one, this one, oh, this was about two years ago. I forgot about this one. It's now coming back to me. You've triggered that. Um it's all coming back. It's all, all coming, coming back. back. So, now. so if you if you look at the name under my you know shot right there, it says uh, Jim Masters, right? Yeah. Now, sometimes on customer service, and you see the way it's spelled, Jim Masters, right? Simple, plain, easy. Uh, is that with one M or two? Is oh, the question. Wow. Jim Masters, is that with one M or two? I'm like, okay, so that means it's either J Masters or yeah. Jim Ast Asters. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Masters. Jim Masters, is not a bad name either. Jim is Masters. That with, Jim, Jim Asters. Yeah. Jim <laughs> Asters. Is, is that with one M or two? I mean. Exactly. I mean. <laughs> but you thank you. Just, you. just stop right there and just. I mean, yeah, uh, oh, customer service representatives, let's give them a round of applause. How many times do you get Kathy Surly? Oh, all the time. All the time. Surlel. I, yeah, Surrell, Surly, and Surly. Posturpedic. Oh, of course. <laughs> I would always say like the drug company, but Surl Pharmaceuticals doesn't exist anymore. Used to be like, oh, Surl, like the, the, you know, clothing line. That doesn't exist anymore. So I'm screwed. And everybody, you, you were, how do you spell it? it? Like, it's, you know, of course you look at it and you go like, serially. Yeah, I get it. If you it were a part of this, well. if you were a part of the pharmaceutical company family, you probably would be in a, an apartment that is at least 400 square feet by now. <laughs> I would be in 425. <laughs> at least, at yeah. least. <laughs> 425 square foot bathroom, please. <laughs> yeah, but you know what it is? It's what you've done with it, huh? I mean, look at this place. I have high feelings. I, you know what? I, I will not take anything for granted in this sweet little apartment. And it is, it's filled with a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of, a lot of uh, secrets told here, too. A lot of actors. I was going to say, that, 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 that ties, <laughs> it, it, it ties into what you just said. I would not take advantage of anything in this sweet little apartment. <laughs> wouldn't, no, I've, no. A lot of levity. Yeah, love, moving on, moving on. That's what it is. A lot of levity. Absolutely. Sure. So yeah. you're enjoying life, all the craziness, and you've learned a lot about yourself. What, what are some... Yeah. Uh, teachable moments and things you've learned about yourself during this time where we've had to pivot and pause and we've had to reflect on our lives and look at our, you know, next chapters, the things we want to do going forward. And you see, you see this mass exodus of people yeah. quitting jobs and, oh, and corporate yeah. jobs and things where they were punching in, punching out. And now they want to do things that touch people's lives that fill their cup. How about you? What are some things Kathy has learned about Kathy during it all? Well, you know, it's interesting because everybody said, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're stuck inside. We're stuck inside. And I kept thinking about that inside. We have to go inside. And it was the year of go inside. 
really figure out the things you want and love and need. And, you know, I was walking like Forrest Gump. I, you know, spent time in the city, but then I would go up to my mom's place in New Rochelle. And I just spent so much time in nature and reconnecting with people I haven't spoken to. And that was beautiful. I really, again, strengthened my friendships with people. And I was that annoying person that would reach out and be like, I haven't heard from you. I'm checking on you. I would do Zoom checkups with friends and family members because people started to kind of go to a dark place. I thought, no, this is not the time. This is the time to really find the light while everything around us is dark. Um, I had to limit my news intake. That was the only thing that was really tough was um, coming to terms with how many people we were losing. Um, and that was something, again, I wanted to help the frontline workers and a friend of mine was one of the frontline workers and we did you know, a beautiful, fun show for them with a lot of Broadway performers. And um, you know, it was reminding myself that I got into this business because I wanted to make people feel something and take them out of their everyday existence and, and the tough times. So I did a lot of short form comedy on Instagram too. I made silly little videos um, that made people giggle. Um, and that, again, I, I felt like, let me fulfill what I feel my purpose is. And that's to make people laugh. Right. Um, right. However I can do that, I'm going to do it. So um, and again, doing that for friends and family, like forcing Zoom dates, because they were like, ah, oh, we don't need to do one. You know, as we got further in, like people were kind of like, nah, we're good. It's October. They're like, nah, nah, we're good. Nope. Gotta keep checking in. Can't lose that connection. You can't. So yeah, I was that annoying person of nope, we're gonna we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about our feelings. People were like, Oh god, here we go again. But you gotta, you gotta get it out. We had uh, Claire Blackhurst on the show, the wonderful actress we all know, and uh, her Wi-Fi was going in and out during the conversation. This was last year, and it was hilarious, and she was trying every which way to stay connected uh, with it during our fabulous conversation. And she, at some point, she ended up in her laundry room uh, <laughs> downstairs in the apartment building because the Wi-Fi was suddenly better in the laundry room. See, she's now in her laundry room. You see the basket of laundry. And of course, the audience wants to get to the nitty gritty sometimes and know. So of all the incredible things we were talking about as far as her career and, you know, I've been, uh, we've known each other for a while and she's amazing. Uh, they really had some very, very deep questions to ask. And I'll ask you one of them too. Um, do you like fabric softer or dryer sheets? I knew it was coming. Because when she was in the laundry room, that's what they needed to know. Let me tell you something. I, uh, I, loved, I love Dreft. I know it's baby fabric softener. Oh my God, I haven't I heard that. I have not heard that one. Again, dress. <laughs> if you're out there, I would love to. Uh, I want to know who came up with the name for that one. Who what cares? My favorite detergent. It's like you know, it's good. If it's good for babies, it's good for us all. Um, it's and just I an do... interesting name, isn't it? It's so like. Yeah. Dress. You know, the other ones are like bold yeah. and tied and all and sunshine yeah. and all yeah. this other. Dress. I think... <laughs> Let's, uh, what could we call it? Not, uh, not dra draft, it's dra draft, draft, hard, dra draft, I'm just drafting. Is that a word? No, draft. I like it. There's something about it. It's got meat to it. Um, but let's make it for babies. Like it is, it's a random company name. Um, but I love them. And I love their detergent and I love and um, tomorrow morning. You're going to get a year's supply on your doorstep by saying that now. I'm sure <laughs> that happened to me. we had an assignment back in school in New York and we had to write to uh, two companies uh, and it was praising their product. 
we had to pick like companies. I think yeah. we were what, 12 or 13. And we actually had to find a way to write to the companies and write a praise letter, you know, a letter praising their product. And, uh, I think one of them, I said, I wrote to the people that make pop tarts. <laughs> and then I think I wrote to chicken of the sea or something. And would you know, I was sent like boxes and boxes of each because they loved that this kid wrote to them praising the product. So I love that. I we think that you might be getting it. some draft coming your way. Draft. Again, sponsored by Draft. Draft. Good for babies. Good for crazies. As, as soft <laughs> as a baby's bottom. Soft as a baby. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> Christine remembers her. when Clea was on, yet it ended up in her laundry room. Epic. <laughs> Such a very fun, fun show. Christine's in North Carolina. Hi, Jim, Kathy, and Lovities. I've been listening to the show. Just couldn't comment. What an entertaining conversation. Full of energy. Fun stories. Denzel Washington saw him in Fences on Broadway. Me uh, too. In the movie, that, too. The movie. That man can do no wrong. I mean, he is just he's brilliant and everything and so kind. Those are yeah. the actors, you know, when people say to me, what do you think the staying power is? Well, you got to you stay true to who you are. And be kind to everyone. Yes. You know, we all have moments where we lose it and we have a shitty day. But that man is kind because he knows where he came from. He started from the, you know, low man on the totem pole and worked his way up in this career. And, you know, yeah. it's remembering that, you know, sometimes failure leads to wonderful things. And he worked his way up and yeah. appreciates, you know, the sweeter the success tastes when you struggle. So sometimes it's I good to I think you are similar. You appreciate it and count those blessings too, right? I do. I'm grateful for every job and it doesn't matter if it's a demo for a voiceover. I'm grateful for, you know, again, you're paying me to speak. You're paying me to create a character from a, a picture and bring it to life. You're, uh, you're letting me tell a story and lift it off the page. I'm so grateful because I don't know how to do anything else. I mean, I'd be screwed. If this doesn't work, I'm, I mean, what would I do? I don't have any skills. <laughs> so I'm, I mean, I could maybe be an Uber Eats driver. I'm a good driver. I don't have any tickets. So, but other than that, guys, it's, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm Mr. Snuffleupagus shirt girl. <laughs> Collection of novelty t-shirts. It's and and food themed dresses. Bizarre. If if you saw the closet, you would be very confused. I went through phases of clothing. And what what uh, was that for? Do you remember? Uh, that was actually for um. A, he was a new photographer, and he just wanted to kind of like up his book. And I don't yeah. think he. Prepared for, for someone like me. <laughs> right. I think, like, who is this girl? I mean, I came in bouncing off the wall and I don't do drugs, but I do love caffeine. And so, um, you know, high on life. And he was like, wow, she's embracing who she is. <laughs> right. And that's the key, right? Yeah. That you have the to. Key. You have to. You really do. Because again, Great things will happen and shit things will happen. Yes. It's how you react to it. You know, can can right. you find the humor in the dark? And that is, that's always my goal. And so when people yeah. are going through tough times, right. I will try to find the levity in it. And too, right. exactly. I'm, that's because what else are you going to do? Stewing it? Ooh, right. Find yourself yeah. at the bottom of the bottle? No, that keeps no. you sad. It's, that keeps you down. It keeps you trapped. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So anything you can do to, to lift up, that's, you know, definitely. Poland Spring sponsored by. Sponsored by. <laughs> Poland Spring. Bubbles. You oh, the good guy. <laughs> oh, Tell us about your involvement in that. Yeah. This was one of my favorites because I met my one of my best girlfriends, Anna Klumsky, shooting this movie. Um, and Scott Porter, who is the handsome gentleman on the right, uh, we actually knew each other because 
I co-created the Awesome 80s prom and Scott was the original member of Alter Boys that you had worked, uh, ah. that you had talked to Brian Duncan about. And Alexis was so sweet. She was just like a doll to work with. Now, I didn't watch the Gilmore Girls, so yeah. I didn't really know anything about her. And she was just fun. And she kept saying to me like, oh my gosh, you're so funny. Like I now I want to do comedy. And I was like, but you're hilarious. But she had done the Gilmore Girls. It, I, I, I'm I, always fascinated by people that don't realize that they're funny. But in a yeah. way, I'm like, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Maybe that'll screw them up. Because she's hilarious. <laughs> she's like a quiet comic, which I, I think is beautiful. But she does do a lot of drama, she said. She was like, no, I do a lot of drama. Um, but that was just one of my favorite experiences. And uh, all the girls were still very close. Jeslyn Wanlim, uh, Ursula Abbott, myself, and Anna Klumsky. And Alexis, you know, was, we didn't stay in touch as much, but yeah, it's it's fascinating. Again, I feel like jobs that you do, you meet yeah. these people and you sort of take them along for the journey and, and hopefully they'll, you know, stay in your life. And I love Anna Klumsky still, she still sends Christmas cards and I just- Does she really? Yes, and I have all of them on my refrigerator and it makes me so happy to see her family, her kids. It's beautiful. It's just, you know, you get to work with, amazing talented actors and sometimes they become you know dear friends just because you know you have a lot of time to sit I was around say, do you end up staying in touch with a lot of folks or sometimes due to you know uh the busyness of life not yeah. everybody gets a chance to stay together and in touch but you like you said you are a person who likes to check in and make sure yeah. folks are doing well and uh yeah yeah because you know i think it's so important just to kind of say like Hey, remember me? I loved, I saw yeah. Michael Rappaport not too long ago on the street and I was like, it's me, Kathy, your wife. And he started laughing and he was like, I, of course I remember you dummy. Like, what, he didn't call me a dummy, but I thought like, you know, I'm being ridiculous, but it was so good. What cool. did his real wife say when you ran up to her and said, it's me, your wife? Well, was that I problematic? Had <laughs> I had met her actually. I don't know if they're married. In, I think they are married yeah. in real life. But I had met her, and she was lovely. It's she me, your wife. Don't you me. remember me? She saw me walking by with the mask, and she was like, "Hey, Michael." And then I turned around, and I was like, "Oh, it is Michael." And like yeah. I pulled the mask down, and it was just so great. But yeah, life happens. I loved. Yeah. Um, Michael had done a, a brilliant episode of a, a show and I had texted him and said like, oh my God, your work on this. And I'll often do that where I'll reach out to people and say like, oh my gosh, you know, and because a lot of people that I've worked with have now gone on to do these incredible things. And I sometimes just reach out to say, you know, I know you don't need to hear this, but I'm so proud of you. Like, I just remember starting out with you and watching your star rise and it's, amazing and it just makes me so happy everybody does have their time that's why yes. you're in despair it's a that's mm -hmm. what is shitty about social media yeah you gotta root for each other you gotta you got, root I was just, wait a minute that's i was those are the words again they were just about to come out of my mouth you're a psychic yes I you am. are a psychic you're very intuitive i'm gym masters who do would you like read tarot? Them? You do tarot cards too? Oh gosh, no, I'd be <laughs> terrible at it. Can you imagine? <laughs> this card means you're going to meet a man. I'm married. A man who will give you a massage. I'd be terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh, this would be your yeah. reaction. <laughs> so this was the role where I played a demonic teacher. Um, and boy, oh boy. Was that a yeah. stretch? <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, I'm sure ex boyfriends were probably like, not really. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> kidding. Um, no, it was. It was so hard. Like it, because I love working with kids, and I was terrifying to them, but they were incredible. I when I work with kids as well, I'll always go into the room where the parents are because I started when I was young too. And I just introduced myself and sort of talk about like, Hey, this is what I'm going to be doing. I talked to the kids beforehand and I say like, now I'm Kathy. And so because I was so angry and aggressive throughout this, this film, I, um, you know, talk to them and, and say like, now I'm going to get really crazy. So just, you know, you're going to be scared of me, but it's not me. I'm playing a role. And so, so they feel safe. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, that's fine. Little preparatory there, so they don't run 
and jump out yeah. of the room. Yeah. Oh, another movie. We are, this cast, we are all still very close. Jesse is one of my nearest and dearest. Harrison, and talk about proud of, Harrison is blowing up. SJ, I can't wait to go to her uh, wedding soon. I just saw Erica two weeks ago in New York because you know we're all vaccinated now so we can see each other. It was like a family sweet movie available on iTunes. Um, just a lovely <laughs> slice of life film. And I love doing roles like that. And I got to play you know, a girl trying to figure out her life and she's working yeah. at a pizza shop and trying to find love and, you know, didn't relate to it at all. Um, but I <laughs> did pizza, which was fun. I mean, we worked in a pizza shop. Oh, Petunia. I mean, this is, this one's tough because Ash, Ash Christensen, who um, was the director of this film, passed away uh, yeah. last year and he was so young and brilliant yeah. and he brought me onto this movie and I just, you know, talk about a cast that was incredible. Um, yeah, I, I just, funny movie. Um, getting to work with these actors was just great. Oh, Petunia. I got to throw yeah. plates. Got to throw Did plates you? against a wall. My character Did was getting therapy from um, fabulous actress. Oh my gosh, why am I spacing out her name? This is what happens now. Oh, it happens to everybody. Yeah, no, it's it's a normal thing. Yeah, it's uh, well, you, you, you can, you can uh, fax me at two in the morning if you need to. Yes, I will be. I will be. I'll be faxing away. <laughs> I've isn't still that, made that, that. Yeah. <laughs> <I do. laughs> the sound <laughs> take forever. I have oh, a boy. landline with a fax machine. Ah, oh, Diane. Um, you know. This was a, a, I love Mike Mangelo. He's a director I've had the good fortune of now working with three times. His newest film is coming out called The Changed. It's actually premiering in London next month at the Fright Fest. Um, and mm. Diana was another one. He is just, Mike has this knack for doing horror movies and in such kind yeah. of a thrilling way. But I have a very small role in this. And, um, but I loved I, anytime I get to work with a director that I've previously worked with, it's heaven. And he reached out and said, like, hey, would you mind? It's not, you know, a huge role. And I'm always like, are you kidding me? Again, I get to create something from nothing. And it was just this young wom woman who worked at the liquor store that kind of dealt with the lead male who had a lot of stuff going on psychologically, which was fun. Your uh, ability to really exercise your variety and versatility is amazing. Thank you. Oh, animation. Woo. Yes, tell us about this. I to sing in that one. I played Mama Bird. Um, I, you know, I have to say, getting to do animation is probably one of the most fun, freeing jobs you'll ever do. Uh, you're in a booth. You, I mean, you know, it's, yes. you're creating something from a picture or from animation. That's why I love video games as well. And there's a freedom to it that is is just, it's heaven. Oh yeah. Um, and a, it's something for kids. Are you kidding me? Like uh, you're paying me for that? That's amazing. It's family friendly. I love it. Yeah. Just, I, lo I love Alessandra, t uh, totally. Every Everybody loves Team Umizumi and it's, it's a good show. Nickelodeon has been good to me over the years. I've done a lot of promos for them. And um, it's true. I, I find now, too, I like doing family films, family friendly. Like, you know, I like doing the really funny over the top and then, you know, the dark. But I, I love a good family, sweet movie that, you know, kids and, and moms and dads can watch together. Well, look, Alessandra says her granddaughter loves Team You Resume. Isn't that team, amazing? Team, yeah. Team. yeah. Love it. Nickelodeon's yeah. got good content. <laughs> Wait, you know, how big your family is now that you are part of our, oh, I love that. You're part, you're a lovety now on the Gym Master <laughs> Show Live. I you love are a lovety. That. You know, we tell everybody you can get Emmys, Peabody's, Grammys, Tony's, Telly's, Oscars. But when you get a lovety uh, from the Gym Master Show and family, I bet your, your feet are tingling about now, huh? They are. They are. My hearts are filled with levity. 
And yes, uh, they are. I like it. I was going to say she got the memo. That's why she's got the hearts there. I know. <laughs> Do they have to go back to Michael's crafts in the morning? <laughs> you know, they are for Michael's guys. I love Michael's. I home, just home goods. I have to. <laughs> home goods is, oh, I mean, leave me in a home goods or. I could see you in one of those one. commercials running oh. through the store at TJ Maxx. Oh my God. Look at that bargain. Oh, I got to have that bargain. And throw it. It in. We, did, we kind of did that with Kohl's, although we yes. shot yes. that first spot that was in an office in South Africa, which was amazing to go to Cape Town. Yes. It was That's incredible. Cool. Yeah. I always, cool. when I get to travel for work, oh, you know what I use my stipend on? My per diem food. And I will tell you, I go into a restaurant because you know, when you're working, and you haven't met everybody yet, I often go and eat by myself. Go into a restaurant, I have no food allergies. I say, don't bring me a menu. Tell the chef tonight, it's tonight's the last night of, of, of the world. What do I need to eat? Never been disappointed, never ever. I mean, I have had exotic foods. I had ostrich, which, you know, was, tastes like chicken. Um, <laughs> Everybody but, says that. <laughs> they had but, alligator, tastes like but, chicken. <laughs> yeah, where did I have ostrich? Like it's, and it was amazing. I mean, I got to work in New Orleans and, you know, thank God for elastic waistbands. <laughs> <laughs> thank God I don't have to play that character that's like that you know, character. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> great, bring on the grits, please. She's eating tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You know who's been enjoying this whole conversation and this uh, episode of JMS Live? Um, somebody who's my sidekick usually here every night. Mr. George Burns is with us. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> oh, God, George Burns. I love, love. Is that, okay, is he an actual doll or a cutout? Yes. No, it's the real thing. He's a real doll. Yes, that he is. is. Does, he, does he, can you make him speak? No, he's on a pedestal. You know how we oh. put people on pedestals? <laughs> he's actually and George, uh, and George, who played God, of course, we say that. Usually when I, uh, towards the end, when I bring this out, everybody gets like the reaction of you like, oh my God, that's George Morris. Uh, my aunt in, in Connecticut collected dolls, all kinds. And when he was 100, this was a collectible that came oh. out for a limited edition. Uh, with the certificate and all, and he's usually wrapped in, you know, this special oh. cellophane and in the special box. So I uh, brought him out for the Gym Masters show last year. Everybody fell in love with him. So he's one of our cast of characters here on JMS Live. Is that a Alan doll too? Who? A Gracie, his we wife. Oh, I know. You know, I haven't seen one. We do have on set, we have... Um, Somebody Casper, wants to... the friendly ghost. We have oh, Gilligan no. oh. from from Bob Denver's wife, Dream of Denver. Bob played, love of course, that. Gilligan. She was yeah. on our show. Oh, so, I love uh, George. Him. George sends you his love, and he said, uh, "You know, good night, you, did good. you did good, kid." <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I had a psychic once say, "Gracie is your spirit guide," and I said, "I'll take it. I love her. You know, I, I could, I could see that." I can uh, see that. Kathy heaven. Short says, Kathy, I love your enthusiasm. You are so much fun. Thank you, fellow Kathy. Are you a Kathleen or a Catherine? That's right. We've never asked what that. A good uh, name. Kathy, Kathy in Cleveland. Short. That's a good name. I like it. Kathy Short. That's right. She's not, she's never short on wonderful comments either. No, she is not. <laughs> And She's I like from that. Cleveland, Ohio, the wonderful city uh, of Cleveland. So are yeah, Kathy, are you, Kathy Short, are you Kathleen or are you Catherine? You're Kathleen, right? Like yes. my cousin. Yeah. Yay, Kathleen. And, uh, Kathy is a Kathleen. She's a Kathleen. <laughs> yes. There you go. She's love a long it. time, regular, faithful lover. You usually here every night, unless the Cleveland Indians are playing at home. Then she watches the episodes in the archives on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. <laughs> you got a roof for your team. You got to do the hometown team. Exactly. <laughs> this I was awesome. That. You Thank still have you. your uh, your glass, your Starbucks thing? I Well, now I've got, I've moved on to my Poland Spring. 
Remember TV shows when you weren't allowed to show the label? So oh, they would have no. something like this and they would take like the Are word and like this, it wouldn't be subway, it would be, you know, sub one or something. They would try to like block it out. And he's like, that, that's really bad. Or, see, right. <laughs> they yeah, never did or, that with draft. They left draft as draft. No. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, how could you alter that? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I, you know, I was reaching out to people. I thought, oh no, is anybody going to want to listen to me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so thrilled that people actually came out. I mean, I know they came out oh. for you, but um, that you listened to me blab on and on. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> it was our pleasure or my pleasure. And uh, I really hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as and much I as I you. have with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for making it easy and, you know, free flowing conversation. I love it. And thank you for everybody asking beautiful questions. And I would love to go to, is it Melbourne, North Carolina? It, I bet Melbourne, you have good. Yeah. Yeah. You have good food there. That's Listen, right. If anybody wants to hire me in North Carolina, give me a holler. I will get in the car and drive there. I love that drive. i Love oh North yeah. Carolina. Have you have you done the drive to Florida? No. No, because I, you know, if I'm driving alone, that's a tough one. North Carolina I did on my own though. And that it was is a tough one when you're alone. Yeah, I haven't done it alone, but I would imagine I've done it with family and I'm usually the driver. I did it during uh, COVID and there were no real rest stops. No, that's right. Everything was pretty much closed and shut and uh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, I, I hope you weren't I hope you weren't in a compact car. Well, I was, I was, but I'm short. I'm barely five two, so you know, I'm fine. <laughs> but um, it's uh, been a blast and a pleasure, <laughs> <laughs> Alessandra. <laughs> like it's at the side of the road. Oh my god! Thank yeah, you I both. Horrified. I know. As a woman, I'm oh, like, oh well, you don't want to stop off and uh, wait. South of the border wasn't open. <laughs> nothing, nothing, you guys. So. Whenever we, we pull up there once, we never see anybody there. We just see these cars, but we don't see people. Yeah. I didn't want to go into the woods. I thought something would bite me. So you just, thank God I was wearing a dress and a Starbucks cup. <laughs> <laughs> now you all know so much about me. On that note, good night. On uh, that, good night. Portions of these broadcasts were recorded. <laughs> So uh, this was a blast, my friend. I hope we get a chance to uh, get together in person. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah. We are within the we are hug. we are both in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut tri-state area, so we're close by. Yeah. And uh, truly, I hope uh, you really enjoyed yourself because I certainly did with you as uh, my guest on the show tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me, and thank you for tuning in, everybody. Stay healthy and happy, and hug your loved ones. <laughs> How would you describe the Gym Master Show experience to somebody who hasn't seen the show or come on as a guest yet? If you were at a soiree and you were mentioning your guest appearance on the Gym Master Show Live, how I would, would you say, describe it? Gym Masters is a masters of everything. He's a comic genius and he is a masters of communication. There is a reason. Yeah, yeah. That your name is Jim Masters with two M's. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the S at the end. Sometimes we get mail that says Jim Master. And when your name is Masters and it comes Jim Master, it's like Jim Master. Yeah. I, you're like, waiting for something it's, else. It's, it's like the S is off. We didn't leave the last S off for savings. <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's like Masters. There for a reason. Yeah. Masters. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Sometimes the mail comes as master and I'm like, or when I was a kid, master James Masters. How about that? Oh my God. We're dating ourselves. We're, we're showing our ages. I, like <laughs> it. I actually like it. No, I would say that you make it, you are, you're like an old school talk show host. And we miss these days of having a conversation rather than question, answer, question, answer. Yeah. Typical interview. You're right. Yeah. It's, and it should feel like just a natural, you know, shooting the shit. I happen to be an actor, but I'm also just a lady living in the lap of luxury. <laughs> and, and or the breeze, <laughs> the breeze and I. Yes. Yes. 
375 square feet. Glorious. Glorious. What's, what is the biggest room? Are you in it now? This is it. If it was MTV Cribs, they would be like, boop. It would be, it would be MTV Crib. Yeah. Yeah. They would be like, hop in her crib. Yeah. Pretty much. A two minute segment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a lot of family again, photos over here. Lots of family photos because, you know, family is muy importante to me. And then you can see my booth behind my, that is, that's my voiceover studio. <laughs> that's where the magic happens now. So for people seeing what that is, you actually go in there and it's soundproof and you have the mic and all the equipment and you do yeah. your VOs there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because now everything's from home. I mean, sometimes it we is. have studios still, but it's very rare. I got to go into a studio for the first time, and I was like crying, touching the ground. Like, oh, do you oh. prefer the studio, or do you like the home, or and do you, and do you like auditioning on location, or do you like self tape? There's a mix uh, no. as far as what people like of each. Yeah, I I miss being in person again. Human contact yeah. also. I, it's fun in the room, especially when you're meeting producers, because sometimes this doesn't translate in the Zoom world. Um, it might be a little too big, but you see it in the room and you kind of go like, oh, I get it. Um, I also miss casting directors. There's a reason they are directors. They're, yeah. They know more than you do, and they're giving us priceless information. So um, I, I can't wait for us to, to go back, but I know it's going to be different. I'm used to the self taping. I know we have to be, but um, I love being in a voiceover studio where I don't have to be my own engineer as well. Yeah, it's a whole the technical side of it is what has uh, right. Everybody's had to learn on the fly. Yeah. 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 So. Right. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully, there's a new normal, and we'll we'll adapt uh, adapt and adjust and like we always do. Absolutely. That's what it is. You've got yeah. to, because you, you got to keep moving forward, right? You got to keep yeah. moving forward. Yeah. One You're amazing. Time. You're amazing. Yeah. Thank you. High five. High five. <laughs> this was awesome. This was Thank awesome. You. Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I feel like you grew up across the street from me or something. It's I know. Just like, you, you know. I wish we went to school together. You know, it's very funny. And you've probably heard this before. Or it could be a revelation. When you are, when you live on Long Island, which of course, for those watching outside the United States is part of New York state. Yeah. It is just East of New York city. Um, if you go anywhere North of the Bronx, anywhere North of the Bronx, you're going upstate for the weekend. I know. And so if you're going to New Rochelle or White Plains or Maverick you Neck, you're going upstate for the weekend to the country yeah. and it's funny because then you talk to somebody in new rochelle or mamaronek or rye and they're like this is not upstate no. syracuse is upstate this is not upstate it isn't it's 28 <laughs> minutes from broadway <laughs> so for for those that are on the beautiful long island uh surrounded by the water you are from upstate and, yeah. I'm, and I'm from the island <laughs> Now on water to calm those nerves. I love it. We're going on Long Island, not in it. Yeah. <laughs> True. I realize people do say that a lot. <laughs> yes. That's that you're going in Long Island. You really? Okay. All right. All right. Alessandra says you're great, Kathy oh, and Christine. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, Pinehurst. I love that. It's a great spot. Oh, yes. Golf championship. Can I be like the MC for that? Very nice. I'd be horrible. I'd be like, oh, you'd God. be fantastic. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> there is. There's more. Uh, more but, golf. The, but Kathy, the players have left already. <laughs> no, but wait, there's more. Going. I'm just getting started. I'm just warming up, gang. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my well, friend. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And you are welcome back any night. Uh, thank you. Uh, best to our You're friend, our mutual friend, Ryan Duncan, of course. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Ryan. I know. And okay. uh, spread the word about our show. We would love that. And the YouTube channel, G Masters TV. 
you can share the link on all of your beloved social media. Yeah. Uh, social <laughs> Tick media. this and talk that and everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. WhatsApp and what's this and what's not and all the rest. And what and, is uh, life? Facebook and face this and face that, face the music, wherever you are. <laughs> Tweet this, Twitter that. <laughs> Insta this, Insta that, Instagram, Friends. Insta coffee, wherever it is. Yeah. Linked this, linked that. <laughs> I see, I got one out of you. I got one out. One for the road. One for the road. Short for the road always. <laughs> that, that was not an electrical current sound that you heard or anything, folks. <laughs> that was, that was, that Just was humanity you. at its best. Maybe <laughs> with that. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Again, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Right, I was going to say sometimes. <laughs> Bring the bunk cake. <laughs> Nothing but cakes. Look it up. Get that red velvet. Oh, <laughs> uh, look. I should be spokespeople. You could read that one. A snort shows a great laugh. Thank you. Thank you. I dated a guy once and he was like, ew, did you snort? I was like, this isn't going to work, man. This word. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like the snorting, that's it, you know. Exit it stage like left. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You got to have humor. You got to have levity. And to have it on a Monday to kick off the week is fantastic. Is yeah. fantastic. Is fantastic. Craven, so just get started. This is yeah, no. Tomorrow night she'll be starring on Cirque du Soleil. She's <laughs> warming up. <laughs> she'll be hanging upside down from her pinky toenail. <laughs> if you have Olympic fever, I'm going to tune in now because I think uh, yes, gymnastics. Sir, yes, the, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You're going yeah. from gym masters to gymnastics. <laughs> well played, sir. On that Very note. Very small. Good night. You take everyone. care. Be Thank well. You. Really, truly, Kathy, it was a pleasure. Lots of fun. And uh, we'll, we'll keep that porch light on for you, okay? Oh, I love you. Thank you. You too. You too. Take care now, all right? Bye. Bye-bye. Kathy Searle, live from New York City. She was amazing. Wasn't it cool to have her here on the show? Uh, an extended conversation. We were having so much fun. We just let it roll, and we both loved it. And hopefully you guys loved it as well. If you missed anything... Man, you got a lot of fun and a lot of humor on this episode. It was really, really cool having her on the show. Kathy Searle, actress and voiceover artist here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Again, hope you guys really enjoyed it. It was terrific, terrific, terrific. We loved having her here on the show. Good stuff. Thanks, Kathy. She was a riot, wasn't she? Also coming up this week, we have Brian Childers. He's a terrific actor. He's going to be joining us this week on the Gym Masters Show Live. The brilliant actress Cynthia Strauss is joining us live on the Gym Masters Show. We love them and they're coming on. Don't forget, our YouTube channel is Gym Masters TV. The channel you're watching right now, a channel dedicated to entertaining, informing, educating, inspiring, Lots of laughs, good times, and so much more here on our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Check that out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share the links. Click the notification bell so you never miss anything. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, do leave a comment on our YouTube channel. We would love that. Don't forget to smile. And also give us a thumbs up as well, a thumbs up like. Don't forget to smile and share the lovity. Don't forget to find your zen place. Mine, of course, family and friends, always paramount. Love the ocean as well. Don't forget to uh, you know, share your zen with the world. Also, my work in television, radio, stage, and film over the years, another zen place as well. And don't forget, you can also find all the episodes, all 430. You can binge watch, see some amazing episodes of The Gym Master Show live on our YouTube channel. You can binge watch. You can have a good time if you missed any episodes. They are all there for your enjoyment, your pleasure, and all the rest. We love having all of you here on our show, those of you who watch live and uh, don't comment, those of you who comment during the show, those of you who watch later on in the archives, 
It's a pleasure and an honor to have you guys with us and a busy week of amazing guests coming up and hope you guys are doing well. Joe Megan B says, love being in this energy tonight. Kathy's amazing. Jim, you're the best. Joe Megan B, it's always wonderful. And we love your energy when you're with us as well. Merlin says, awesome show. Thank you, Merlin in Canada. Uh, great commentary from you tonight as well, Merlin. And Sherry Larson in Kansas, as always, Jim, wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Sherry. We always try to have a good, uplifting time. And wherever it goes, it goes. It's conversational and freestyle. And thanks for that, Sherry. And Kathy Short says, love the show tonight. Have a great evening, Jim. Yes, Kathleen Short of Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, Mary Bishop says, Kathy was so much fun. Good night, all. Take care. And again, while you're on the YouTube channel, again, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel. We would love it. Uh, good night, Kathy. Alessandra says, loved it very much. Thank you very much, Alessandra. And um, and Juanita, I don't think Juanita's here tonight, but uh, she had mentioned uh, South Africa as well on this episode. Christine Clifton, Jim and Kathy, this was true entertainment. Kathy was a wonderful guest and terrific lovety. Thanks for sharing your career and life with us. So many fun stories I could say. She's a hoot and a half. I agree. I can't wait till we get together. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys are amazing. And uh, thanks for all the great comments. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Again, we've got some amazing uh, conversations, inspiring conversations, light, love, levity, and so much more for you guys coming up right here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Have a great night, gang. It's always a pleasure to be in your company. Thanks for joining us. It's always cool when you're here. We love it. We'll see you on the next episode. We'll be back tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific Live during our summer hours here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Tell everybody about our show. Share the lovity. And um, we'll love you back with more entertainment and uh, cool times. Have a good night, gang. We love you all. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.